search of his first ring. And with Sterling Sharp on board, the sky's the limit. The Rams and Packers are next. Fall season has arrived in the heartland of America, where it sold out Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin, where a pair of two and three teams meet today, the Los Angeles Rams and the Green Bay Packers. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, alongside the future Hall of Famer, Anthony Munoz. I'm Tom Brenneman. As far as the L.A. Rams are concerned, already a couple of wins under their belt. And when you talk about the Rams, big fella, look no further than James Bennett. They might have a problem at the quarterback position. Unsettled there, but no question about that running back position. Jerome Bettis goes for number five in a row as far as gaining 100 yards per game. And Jerome Bettis, the only team to hold him under 100 yards in one game was the opening game against the Arizona Cardinals. We'll watch Jerome Bettis here today. When you look at the L.A. defense, however, they're starting to get a lot of pub as well. Well, their defense is playing extremely well. You'll see bodies flying all over the place, and one big body you'll see flying around is number 90, Sean Gilbert. Well, the one guy they'll be chasing, of course, in this his fourth season with the Packers is quarterback Brett Favre. He needs a big game. He does. Brett Favre comes into this game with excellent numbers. He comes in, he's matured, it's now his offense, he's taken control, but as Mike Holmgren told us this weekend, after this year, they'll know for sure if Brett Favre is the quarterback of the future, and then you look over at the defensive side of the ball, you look at number 92, Reggie White, who's willing and ready to play this year. He's gotten some help on the other side with Sean Jones. All right, when we come back, we'll have a starting lineup and the opening kickoff from Green Bay. The Rams and the Packers, Jerome Bettis, Reggie White. The stars are on hand today. It's coming up after this word from your local Fox station. You're watching Fox NFL Sunday. Tradition rich Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Today, the Rams and the Packers, the tailgaters, have been out since late last night, early this morning. One of the great pastimes here in Green Bay. Well, the Rams will kick off. See the weather. Very nice afternoon. Certainly the fall season. 48 degrees. A slight chance of rain later on this afternoon. Chuck Knox is the head coach. His 22nd season as the head man in the NFL. His second tour of duty, of course, with the Rams. And the former San Francisco 49er offensive coordinator, Mike Holmgren, in this his third season as the head coach of the Packers. You said nice weather, and you said turn the heater on in here. What's the deal? <laughs> I didn't come prepared. <laughs> Tony Zendejas to kick it off. Corey Harris, number 30. Marcus Wilson, number 29, waiting to receive. And we're underway. A short kick. Harris at the 12. Good hole. And he crosses a 35. And that's where the Packers will put it in play at the 37. We mentioned Brett Favre. This is fourth season out of southern Mississippi. He is number one in the NFC in passing yards, passing attempts, and completions. Up front protecting him. A good group led by the former Southern Cal Trojan, Ken Rutgers, and on the right tackle, Joe Sims. In the backfield, a most versatile player, and Edgar Bennett joining the former Tampa Bay Buccaneer, Reggie Cobb. Sterling Sharp, the all-pro, along with Robert Brooks at wide receiver, and Ed West is the tight end. First and 10, and Favre coming out throwing. Dumps off the screen to Bennett. And he just made it back to the line of scrimmage. A defense that has to not only watch the pass, but as they started out with the screen pass, number 90 leading that attack, Sean Gilbert with pressure from the outside with Robert Young and Fred Stokes. Look for those three guys. Linebackers led by 56, Shane Conlon. Defensive secondary, they see Henley, Pope, Newman, and Light. A really good defensive secondary for the Rams. Light, the former number one pick out of Notre Dame, trying to stay healthy this season, something he has not done his first three years in the league. Second and ten, Bennett in motion. And the give is to Reggie Cobb. Spinning away, a short gain of maybe three. It'll bring up third and long, Shane Conlon on the tackle. Well, they start this game mixing it up. They start the screen pass right there. They try run to the right, but number 56, Shane Conlon, who has always been an excellent defender against the run, he'll come up and he will hit you, no doubt about that. 
Conlon, a three-time Pro Bowler, signed as a free agent from Buffalo last year. It'll bring up third and seven, and a four-receiver set into the game for Green Bay. Flag down. Barb way off target, trying to hit Robert Brooks, but again, a penalty flag is on the field. Well, he had excellent protection there. Eight penalties last week for this Green Bay Packer team. And as you see, offsides against the Packers, they have to eliminate those penalties. Well, they lost a heartbreaker last week against New England. Offense, number 81, lined up in a neutral zone. That always declined. Fourth down. So it'll bring up fourth down. Brett Favre took his team down the field and punched it in with a minute 14 to go. But then they missed the extra point on a bad snap. The kickoff by Jackie went out of bounds, and all Drew Bledsoe had to do was get him about 40 yards. The field goal by Matt Barr in New England came away with the victory. Hedrick punts it away, and it may have hit a ram. Scramble for the football. And they'll have to unpile this group. The ball bounced back. It may have hit an L.A. ram. Well, that's where the, the receiving team has to be aware of where that football is. If they're running down, totally concentrated on who they have to block and not aware of where the football is, that happens. You have to be aware of where the ball is, and right there, the Packers recover it. Well, now the officials are going to talk. Momentarily, they gave the signal for Green Bay, and Jeff Wilner, back up tight end, made the recovery. It is Packer football. Right there, you see it. It hits them. It's rolling around. Now it's a mad scramble for the football. Thomas Humco, linebacker, hits him in the back. And all of a sudden, the Green Bay Packers get the first break of this ball game. But still, the officials are in conference on the field. So still waiting as the jury deliberates. And we'll take a look one more time. Again, Homko, it appeared to hit him as it bounced back toward the original line of scrimmage. As you see the ball bounces, Homko's trying to block his man, Shimura, but it hits him, and he's not aware of it until really field, he sees... Was the ball was touched by a Green Bay player prior to the touching by the Los Angeles player. First time. That looked like a good call. Well, let's look at it again, and we'll see exactly what happened. And... I don't know. You, early in the game, you think that you have it recovered, but it, it hits a Green Bay player first. Yeah, Mark Chimura, I believe, is the man 89. You see Homko right here, 57. It hits Chimura right in the thigh, as you can see there. So it does hit the Green Bay Packer first, and then it hits Homko. So therefore, the ball remains with the Rams. All right, first play from scrimmage, the quarterback, Chris Miller. He started the first three games this season for Chuck Knox's team. Had a slightly separated shoulder in the loss to the 49ers. And he's starting in place of Chandler here today. Jerome Bettis off the left side, up close to the 35. Miller, and this is eighth season out of Oregon, signed as a free agent over the summertime from Atlanta. Up front, he'll go with Jones, Newberry, Brostick, Goez, and the 19-year veteran, Jack Eastlater. More on him as the game rolls along. Jerome Bettis, a rookie all-pro a year ago. Willie Anderson and Jesse Hester, the wide receivers. And Troy Drayton, keep an eye on him today, is the tight end. Second down and six. And again, it's better. Nowhere to go. This is a solid Green Bay defense. A defense that is led by number 92, a member of the NFL's all 75th year team, number 92, Reggie White. An amazing player in his 10th year. Linebackers led by Fred Strickland, the former Ram. Secondary, they have a good secondary left by former Seminole, Terrell Buckley. And Leroy Butler, who has missed the last three games with a bout of pneumonia, is back in the lineup here today. Third and five. Protection. Miller fires close to the 40, but they might be a little bit short. Johnny Bailey with the reception. They needed to get almost uh, to about the 40 and a half, the 41 yard line. 
As the game goes on, we look at different battles in the offensive Time out for line. In the offensive line, the defensive line, wide receivers, defensive back. But one of the battles that will be going on today for most of the time is number 78, Jackie Slater, as you mentioned, in his 19th year, and Reggie White, number 92. But a lot of times, as you see here, they line Reggie White up inside, and right now he's going against Leo Goez at the right guard position. Reggie White, a great combination of speed, strength, and knowledge of the game. And the measurement. Waiting for an indication. It appears as though they are maybe an inch or two short. So that'll be the ruling. And the Rams will have to punt it away. Chuck Knox, the only coach in NFL history over 75 years to win division championships with three different franchises. The Rams back in the 70s, Buffalo, and of course, Seattle. That's an amazing accomplishment. Talking to Chuck Knox before the game, he's calm, collective. He just he knows that this is just another football game, but it's an important game for his football team. Sean Landetta back to punt. Good punt sends Robert Brooks back to the three, and he's out close to the 15. So a timeout on the field. There is 11.26 left to play in the opening quarter. No score from Green Bay, Wisconsin's Lambeau Field. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Cadillac and your Cadillac dealer, creating a higher standard. By Taco Bell, tacos, burritos, and nachos, cross the border. By A1 Steak Sauce and Spicy A1 Bowls, together there, how steaks are done. And by New York Life, the company you keep. Look at the courthouse in downtown Green Bay. The statue on the right, the spirit of the Northwest, dedicated back in 1931, and of course, the state of Wisconsin. Cheeseheads have gathered each and every Sunday for NFL football. Reggie Cobb taking the handoff on a first and ten, and he's met at the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of a yard. We have an offensive line here in the Green Bay Packers that has really been hit by a lot of injuries. In talking to Coach Holmgren, he mentioned the one thing is that the three years he's been here, that's one area that they've been hit with a lot of injuries. Their right tackles, Joe Sims, uh, Earl Dotson, all nicked up. So they know today They've been able to pass the ball previous game, but today they have to establish that running game. They have to move this excellent defensive line out of there. Gain of two, it'll be second and eight. Play action. Barb looking downfield. Way underthrown. It's intercepted by Daryl Henley. He's across the 25. And down near the 15. So Barb, who certainly will hear the boos from the fans here in Green Bay, he had 24 interceptions a season ago, and this season that is his sixth. Well, that was the one area that they thought Brett Farr was really maturing in, was cutting down the interception. But right there, a receiver not in sight, and Henley makes the interception and takes it back. Once again, talking to Coach Holmgren before the season started, he mentioned that we need Brett Favre to cut down the mistakes, cut down the interceptions, and right here in the second drive, he throws an interception. So a golden chance for the Rams to jump out in front on the road here at Lambeau Field. And Chris Miller is under center. The lone back, Jerome Bettis. Flipper Anderson in motion, and more to throw. Swings it out, blocked by Bettis. By the way, we mentioned during the pregame show that Chris Chandler, we were told he would be the number two quarterback today, that his sprained ankle, uh, which occurred in the game last week against Atlanta, was doing a great deal better. But just before the game, he is now inactive. Tommy Maddox is number two behind Miller. I'm down on the field, and they're warming up, and all of a sudden I see Chris Chandler sitting there in street clothes, and I'm confused. What's going on here? But he hasn't dressed it out today. They do, as you mentioned, Tommy Maddox, the backup quarterback today. Second and 10. Ball at the 16, and they pitch to Bettis. Turns a corner. Down along the sideline, and Bettis apparently stepped out of bounds. Inside the five, it could be good enough for a Rams first down. 
Well, he is some kind of player in the Anthony. Well, the thing you, you look at Jerome Bettis, who weighs 245 pounds, and you think that all he can do is pound it upside, inside. But you see him right back here taking the pitch, and he takes it around the left side. A nice still block there on Sean Jones, and he has enough speed to get around that corner, and he does step out of bounds. But again, you look at his size and you think, well, this guy's just going to pound it between the tackles, but you can pitch it to him, and he has the speed, and he's nifty enough to take it around the end. It is a first down, first and goal for the Rams at the Packer five. Bettis up the gut, and he plows forward down to the two. And right there, you send him outside, then you can say, okay, Give him the ball and let him take it right behind Leo Goas and Jackie Slater. Let's just pound that defense, and that's what they're doing right now. Bettis comes in, uh, the second leading rusher in the NFL, second only to Barry Sanders, and he is third in total yards. Last season, of course, he finished behind Emmett Smith for the NFL rushing title. Second and goal, the ball at the Packer three. Fake the handoff, and the throw into the end zone, touchdown, Troy Drayton. Well, that's one of the things, talking to Coach Knox before the game, he says, we can't run the ball every play, and as a running back, you hate to do that to Jerome Bettis, run him, run him, run him. He said, we have to go to Troy Drayton, and right here, they give a nice play fake, and they go to Trey, uh, Troy Drayton. Right here, you see Miller going back, nice play action fake there. 84, Troy Drayton wide open in the end zone for six. Well, Drayton had uh, been unhappy with this Rams offense, and, and now he gets a touchdown reception, his second TD of the year. Zendejas on to add the extra point, and it's good. So the Rams, after the interception by Henley, have turned it into a touchdown. Miller and the Rams in front, 7-0. When you have a team like the Los Angeles Rams that run the ball effectively with Jerome Bettis, a play-action pass works wonderfully. You see number 79, Leo Goes, making it look like a run. He's not sitting back to give the defense the appearance of a pass. He's attacking the defensive line, and that's what creates the sound for that defense where they think, hey, this is a run. They come up, all of a sudden you get Troy Drayton behind the defense for a touchdown. And a 7-0 Ram lead, Corey Harris on the return and he's out close to the 26 before he's met by Daryl Henley Henley of course already an interception and he's uh, trying to talk him into getting a fumble here but the officials not buying into that DeMarco Farr picked it up well he only needed to go 16 yards the key play the 10 yard run by Bettis to get him down inside the five Tom another point on that play action pass or run action when a defensive secondary man or a linebacker sees the offensive lineman stand up, he knows it's not going to be a pass or a run. So if the linemen come out low, attack the defensive line, that secondary is going to run up to the line of scrimmage. First and 10. And Barb play action. Dumps it off to Bennett. Across the 30. Still on his lead out to the 34. Shane Conlon on the coverage and the tackle, but a good game. Edgar Bennett, certainly one of the most underrated players in all of football. 15th in the NFC in total yards, more receptions out of the backfield than any other in the NFL. Well, if you notice his right arm next time, when you get a close shot of Edgar Bennett, you can see that there's some tape wrapped around that arm, and that's to give him some support, support on that right shoulder that is very sore at this point of the season. And talking to him before the game, he said, I will play today. I'm sore, but I'm looking forward to that bye week where I can let it heal up a little bit. Far fires to his tight end at West. It's good enough for a first down out to the 41. You like to see that type of attitude, especially with the guy like Edgar Bennett, who's in his third year. And as we were talking to Reggie White the other day, uh, he mentioned the fact his first year was Marilyn Olsen's last year playing in the NFL. And that was one of the things he noticed about Olsen was that he was out there. And even though he was banged up, he was still playing. The hand off the top, off the left side. And he's out across the 45. A fine game. Well, one of the hottest debated topics here in Green Bay surrounds Reggie Cobb 
in the first quarter last week, six rushes, had 44 yards against New England. But then the rest of the game, he only gained 28 yards as they give the rookie LaShawn Johnson more playing time. I think after this play, we can talk about Reggie Cobb and what the people, I guess, saw when they acquired him from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Gain of six, it'll bring up second and four. Bar, great protection. Fires out to Bennett. And another Packer first down. Roman Pfeiffer with a tackle. Well, I guess the thing about Reggie Cobb is, you know, the Packers went out this offseason. They acquired Reggie Cobb in the free agent market. They paid him excellent money. And all of a sudden, here's the guy that's going to come in and take care of this running game. But then you draft LaShawn Johnson. All of a sudden, you have two talented backs there, and they want to play the number one pick and LaShawn Johnson. But then you sign uh, Reggie Cobb to big money. So they're in that dilemma of trying to decide who do we play. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times you want to see one guy in there, let him get going, give him the ball as the game goes on and as the season goes on. This is Cobb, and he is met immediately by Fred Stokes, number 60. Well, you know, the Packers, 26th in the NFL in rushing, only better than 72 yards a game. That's been a real thorn in this offense. Well, and, you know, talking to the guys, they realize that. They're quite aware that we have to get the running game going. And as it showed early in this game, they've given Brett Farr a lot of protection on the pass, but they have to run the ball, and that's moving people out. And right here you see that uh, things aren't going that well, and uh, they need to step that part of their game up. Second and nine, Farr going to take off. Slides inside the 40, down to the 39, 38. And no one touched him, I don't think, so he just kept bouncing along. <laughs> Looked like you when you used to fall down. Well, I think he was a little more graceful falling down. I never was graceful when I fell down. Here you see Brett Farr going back, and all of a sudden he has an escort, Reggie Cobb. He says, you take Shane Conlon. I'll try to get more, a little more, maybe even a little more. <laughs> and right here he's pointing to Cobb. You take this guy. I don't want him hitting me. I'll deal with the rest. He's got to learn to slide instead of falling forward. And then he has to realize also when he puts himself down that that's it. He can't bounce his way for extra yardage. Well, they finally touched him in that bounce or two. Got him enough for a first down. And the handoff to Cobb. Cuts it back inside the 30, down to the 27. And on the tackle is Joe Kelly along with Gerald Robinson. On that play, you had an excellent block by Frank Winters, number 52, the eighth year pro out of Western Illinois who they've taken and moving they've moved him from the center position over the left guard position that was occupied early in the year by Guy McIntyre who they picked up from the 49ers but Guy McIntyre is not playing right now he's injured so Frank Winters who they feel comfortable with moving him from center to the left guard position second down and two and again it's Cobb he's wrapped up by numbers 97, Gerald Robinson. Let's take a McDonald's game break, send it to our Hollywood studio, and James Brown. JB. Hey, Tom. Scott Mitchell has been under heat in Detroit for poor play four straight games, but look here. He puts the heat on San Francisco, finding Brett Perryman a 33-yard touchdown strike, and the Lions lead at 7-0, that in the first quarter. Right now, we take you back to Green Bay. Tom Brenneman and Anthony Munoz. All right, JB, thank you very much. The Rams, a 7-0 lead with under four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Third down and two, and the handoff immediately met at the line of scrimmage, and I'm not sure it's enough for a Packer first down. Well, this is a solid Rams defense getting better and better every week. No question about it. I had a chance to see this Ram defense late in the season last year. Basically the same people back with the addition of Robert Young who was injured last year, but they've only given up eight points over the last eight quarters and they have that pressure that comes off the corners with Robert Young as I was talking about. He comes back from that knee injury, picks it up. He has five sacks and Fred Stokes on the other side gives them tremendous pass rush ability. Fourth down and a yard. The Packers will go. And they hand it off to Bennett. And it's enough for the first down. Bennett getting to the 25. talked about that Packer offensive line. They've had some switching going around in there. They put uh, Jamie Dukes at center, who they acquired in the offseason. They get a nice push up the middle there, and they get enough to give 
enough room to give Edgar Bennett room to get that first down. But that's, you, know, you, you would think that's a problem area, but the guys have been able to move to different positions and step it up and say, hey, sure, we have people hurt here, but we can play wherever they want us to. 11th play of the drive on a first and 10 far. Fires to Sterling Sharp. He's inside the 15, close to the 10. Sterling Sharp last weekend became the all-time leading receiver in Green Bay Packer history, surpassing James Lofton. And the four-time Pro Bowler hauls in his 33rd catch of the year. Well, this is a combination that you don't want to get started. Far the Sterling Sharp, and right here you see nice protection. You have Winters and, and Jamie Dukes giving them protection up that middle. Enough time for Brett Favre to hit 84, Sterling Sharp. Sharp just a, a marvelously talented receiver. First and 10. And the play action. They swing it out to top. And coming up and making the tackle is Daryl Henley. Short gain on the play. Well, as we viewed film from the last week's game, and we've seen this team play, they have a nice drive going here, but one thing they did last series, they threw an interception, and that's one of the things. You talk up to the players, the coaches, one drive, they can look like maybe it's a 4-0 team, and then on the next drive, they have mistakes, turnovers, penalties, and that's what they have to eliminate. Second down and six for the Packers. Two tight end set, and they pitch it to Edgar Bennett. Good play coming up from the safety position, Marquez Pope. And this is third year out of Fresno State. They like him already. Three interceptions this season, and he's a big hitter. Not only a big hitter, they, they got Marcus Pope as a cornerback, but they've moved him to strong safety, and he will come up and hit you. Right here, you see the pitch to the right, and 22, Marquez Pope coming up, making the tackle. But like I said, they've taken a cornerback, put him at that safety position, because they know he will come up and hit you. This will be the 14th play of the drive. None bigger. Third and six. Here comes a blitz. And Favre is whacked from behind by Roman Pfeiffer. The pass is incomplete. It'll bring down fourth down. Well, we talk about that Ram defensive line and how effective they've been. But the linebackers with Roman Pfeiffer there from UCLA, number 58, comes off the corner unblocked just as Brett Favre throws the ball. But he is having an excellent year this year, along with Shane Conlon and Joe Kelly, a former teammate of mine mm -hmm. in Cincinnati, playing that other linebacker position. Chris Jackie on for the field goal try. It'll be a 25-yard attempt. Jackie is 7 of 8 this season. And it splits the upright. So the Packers on the board. A long drive. They cash in with three, with 20 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. The Rams in front, 7-3. NFL, of course, celebrating its 75th anniversary. A look back, the Rams and the Packers. Tom Fears, second all-time on the Rams receiving list. 18 catches in one game against Green Bay back in 1950. And that's an NFL record. Of course, we saw a game earlier this year where... Chris Carter, Andre Risen, a couple of games. They had 14 receptions. Not bad receivers. Both ends, Tom Fears and the, the guys playing now. I said, I'd like to be able to run like these guys and catch. You know, I was playing when uh, Carter and Risen were playing, but uh, I wasn't quite playing when Tom Fears was. Uh... Uh, we'll have to look that up. <laughs> we'll have to check that out. <laughs> Green Bay kicking off. Four kick by Jackie. And a scramble for the ball picked up by Tim Lester, and he is tackled at the 33. Kickoffs have been a major problem for Chris Jackie this season. He has booted three of them out of bounds, and none more costly than his final kickoff after they took the lead on that long drive last week in New England. Timeout from Green Bay, 7-3 Rams in the first quarter. Opening Friday at a theater near you, our own John Madden and Anthony's buddy Ed O'Neill star in the new motion picture comedy Little Giants. And tonight they'll be hosting the Fox Sunday night lineup, all part of our Fox lineup. Tom Brennan and Anthony Munoz back in Green Bay. 7-3 Rams lead. Miller steps up, fires down the middle to Flipper Anderson. And he makes the grab all the way down to the Green Bay 39-yard line. And that'll be the final play of this opening corner, a 26-yard pickup. Of course, Flipper Anderson, that's nothing new for him. He averages 
28 and a half yards per reception. That's number one in the NFL. That's the end of the first quarter. Our score, the Rams seven and the Packers three. A matchup we'll be watching all afternoon is the 19-year veteran Jackie Slater against the 10-year veteran Reggie White. Right here you see the two big men, 285 pounds, 295 pounds. It will be a battle. And talking to Jackie Slater, he said the one thing about playing Reggie White, you just try to survive. And I'm sure Reggie feels the same way going <laughs> against Jackie Slater. It's just a miraculous story. 19 years for Jackie Slater in the National Football League. First and ten. Miller tries to go out of the backfield to Jerome Bettis, and it sailed through his mitts. Well, Jackie Slater, third round pick in 1976. The 252nd game today places him fifth all time. He has played in more games than any lineman in the history of football. And he keeps on going. Jerome Bettis was four years old when Jackie Slater started playing in the NFL. And the guy's just amazing. It's not like he's just hanging on either. He is playing well. Mm -hmm. Four receivers into the game for the Rams on the second and 10. Out of the shotgun, Miller, good protection. Steps up, throws, and he finds Flipper Anderson inside the 20, down near the 15. Boy, Miller looks sharp early on. Well, you mentioned Willie Anderson, Flipper Anderson. He's no stranger to catching the ball. Back in 89, he, his best was 15 receptions for 336 yards against the Saints. And right here, nice comeback to the ball, makes a reception, and he's not satisfied with just the catch. He turns it upfield, and he gains a few extra yards. Not easy to say for a Southern Cal Trojan about a UCLA Bruin. First and 10. The ball at the Packers, 17. They hand it to Jerome Bettis. And he's inside the 15, down near the 12. Fred Strickland, the former Ram, on the tackle. Seventh year pro out of Purdue, stands 6'2", 250 pounds, made the first hit on Jerome Bettis. I don't know how that would feel, having a guy that big running full speed, and you plant yourself, and then take, I don't know if you give the hit or take the hit with Jerome Bettis. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Five carries, 22 yards for Jerome Bettis. Second down and six. Miller throws, caught inside the five by Troy Drayton. That's good enough for a first down. It'll be first and goal for the Rams. So this offense, which has really struggled on target thus far here today, well, they're moving the ball well. One of the things, again, as we said earlier in the game, they wanted to go downfield to Troy Drayton, and they are. And once again, right here, Jackie Slater. Nice separation, gets a punch. The two hands in the chest of Reggie White, and what happens when you get that punch into a defensive lineman's chest? You make him restart. You stop his charge. Excellent block by Jackie Slater. First and goal for the Rams. And they pitch it to Bettis. And he's wrapped up and tackled inside the five. And making the stop, Mike Pryor up from his safety position. Nice shot here by the truck. You get Jerome Bettis coming around the end. Mike Pryor, number 39, makes a nice block, or avoiding the block, makes the tackle. And one of the things, talking to Jerome Bettis, the guy has a great personality. He's talking about his philosophy as a runner. He wants to pound guys early. Boom, he pounds them. Then he wants to jitterbug, escape the guys. And then this third thing, he wants to celebrate as he scores touchdown. Well, they take the handoff. Miller avoids the pressure, throws on the rollout, and it is a touchdown. Again to Troy Drayton, his second touchdown of the afternoon. Penalty flag is... On the field, it came in late. And the Rams are plotting, figuring it will go against Green Bay. No flag on the play. Number 70 had reported as an eligible receiver. 70. So it is a touchdown for the Rams. They have gone in front 13 to 3. They'll try and add the extra point. Well, the guy they're talking about, Wayne, Wayne Gandy, reported as a tight end. He did report to no penalty. Chris Miller goes back, some prep pressure by Wayne Pop, but he, 
He gets away from the pressure as he scrambles. Troy Drayton does an excellent job working on the end line there, coming back to the inside. Nice catch and a nice throw. Zendejas on to try and make it an 11-point lead, and he does. So the Rams march down the field against this Packer defense. Miller to Drayton, 14-3 Rams. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by the totally new Ford Contour, a world car for the 21st century. By Russell Athletic, for really tough athletic wear that can survive anything. Get Russell Athletic. Get tough. By Goodyear, number one in tires. And by Warner Brothers' new motion picture, Little Giant, starting Friday, October 14th at a theater near you. Well, over the weekend, Green Bay, Wisconsin hosted a pumpkin festival. Now listen to this. They gave away a largest pumpkin award. The winning pumpkin weighed in over 700 pounds. And you know the first thing that comes to my mind. I know. That's a lot of pumpkin pies. <laughs> Food. <laughs> See the seven play 66-yard drive by the Rams. The key play, the 50 yards uh, in two receptions by Flipper Anderson. Four kick. And it bounces out of bounds. So Zendejas did not put a charge into that one. Well, the one thing the officials were discussing on the last touchdown you have right here, Wayne Gandy reports as a tight end. And what you have a lot of times, you take a big lineman, put him at the tight end position, gives you a little more beef up front when you're close in there to the goal line. He did report. I guess one of the officials wasn't sure if he did or didn't, but he did, and it was a still touchdown for the Rams right there. Wayne Gandy small guy oh yeah he's real small first and ten for the Packers they trail the Rams 14-3 here at Lambeau Field Favre throws and it's caught Sterling sharp on the reception good enough for a first down let's send it back to our Hollywood studio and James Brown Tom, Andre Risen has not been doing a lot of loud talking as of late, preferring to let his actions speak louder. Well, here he does, hauling in a 36-yarder from Jeff George. Atlanta on top, 14-0. And by the way, Tom, I agree with Anthony. That is a lot of pumpkin. <laughs> well, Anthony Munoz knows all about that. You know, there's a pattern developing here, JB. Anthony's talking about pie and about extra beef on the line of scrimmage. The handoff goes to Reggie Cobb. He's across the 45 down to about the 42 good pickup by the former tampa bay buccaneer i know now that i'm not playing tom i got i can't consume myself with food <laughs> right here you see brett Favre giving it to reggie cobb nice open but it closes up in a hurry and that's one of the things you'll get from this la defense as they pursue and they close the holes up quickly gerald robinson making the tackle there It'll be second and five for Green Bay. Favre, a short drop. Throws across the middle, and it's caught by Robert Brooks down near the 30. And they're saying, no, he did not make the reception, that he trapped it. Much to the displeasure of almost 60,000 fans here at Lambeau Field. Well, one of the things that Brett Favre's getting a lot of protection right here. Robert Brooks takes it to the inside. Henley makes a good good close on the close on the play and it appears that he strips it there as Robert Brooks is going down but uh, Brett Favre made a nice throw there but it was an excellent defensive play by Daryl Henley. Henley another UCLA Bruin. Third down or rather is second it is third down. Shit. And Favre trying to escape trouble and he will be taken down the football comes loose and the Rams have recovered. Gerald Robinson applied the pressure, stripped the football, and the second turnover of the game already for the Packers. Right there, Brett Favre has to take the blame for that one. He felt he was being wrapped up by Gerald Robinson, number 97, and he still tried to get rid of the ball instead of going down. Right here, you see him, he pumps once, a little avoids uh, DeMarco right there, but Gerald Robinson makes the hit, and as he tries to throw it, he loses the ball. Another turnover by that Green Bay offense. Well, number 97, Gerald Robinson making the sack on Brett Farr right here. He has him wrapped up. 
and Brett Favre is still trying to throw the ball as he's wrapped up, and we saw that Brett Favre was arguing a little bit. Maybe he thought the whistle should have been blown. He was in the grass, therefore not allowing that fumble to be recovered by the Ram, but they gave it to the Ram. First and 10, ball at the 44. Out of the shotgun is Miller. He's in trouble, but he escapes and throws. The pass is completed just shy of yet another Rams first down. And on the reception, Jesse Hester, his first catch of the game, and he has now caught a pass in 68 consecutive NFL football games. Well, what made that happen was Chris Miller's ability to fill the rush, and he got flush, so he took off, made a nice throw on the run, but Chris Miller, not well, that wasn't the only time. He's done it several times here where he fills pressure from that defensive rush. He steps out, he, he scrambles a little bit, and he hits his receiver downfield. Second and a little less than a yard. Jerome Metis picks up the first down. He's across the 45, down close to the 44. Well, no opposing running back has rushed for more than 75 yards in a game against this Packer defense this season. That could change when number 36 comes to town. Well, when you're giving Jerome Bettis the ball, he can stop a lot of streaks and end a lot of uh, things that defenses have done because, of, I mean, he's just an unbelievable back. You know, you talk about his size, his strength, then he has some good speed. First and 10. Ball of the Packer, 44. Bettis, looking for a hole, creates his own. And a guy comes down, appearing to be a face mask, and Bettis says, you got that right. They'll tack on additional yardage. Well, Bettis has said before, if the offensive line will give me an inch, I'll take a mile. He's very confident, not uh, cocky or anything, but he knows what he can do. And right here, you have a nice block on uh, the First defensive ball, back there. Face mask. Number 15, five of the defense, 15 yards, first down. It was on Fred Strickland, the middle linebacker and former Ram, but you saw the excellent block by Howard Griffin on Leroy Butler, allowed Jerome Bettis to get around that corner. And when you get Jerome Bettis out in the open field, as Strickland did there, you need a little more to bring him down. And that time, he grabbed his face mask. Well, again, we mentioned four straight 100-yard rushing games by Jerome Bettis. And the Rams record held by Eric Dickerson, who had six in a row back in 1984. First and 10 at the 25 after the penalty. Bettis lunging forward, wrapped up by Sean Jones, a short gain. Well, you mentioned Jerome Bettis. You mentioned Eric Dickerson. And then, of course, Jackie Slater. We've been talking about him. And you have to mention Walter Payton, who we blocked for in college. We said, Jackie, about these great running backs. What is it with these great running backs? And he said, well, there's one thread that goes through, and I can describe these running backs as you see right here, Bettis, Dickerson, and Peyton. He said, every one of those backs said, give me the ball, give me the ball, I want to run the ball. And that's what he likes about the backs he's fought for in his career. Well, those are some kind of names up there. Second down and seven. And a flag comes down. Here it is, though, Jackie Slater. They have moved a bit early. He doesn't like the call much. Both start prior to the snap. Number 78, the offense. Five yards, still second down. You know, it's so hard to imagine that Jackie Slater sharing a story with us yesterday that uh, 1969, Slater, then a 10th grader in Jackson, Mississippi, uh, was part of the very first uh, school integration down south. And, and it's so hard to even imagine for many of his teammates uh, that one of their own uh, could have lived through that very uh, tumultuous time in our country. Um, for myself, growing up in Southern California, it was very interesting hearing that story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the pitch to Bettis, looking for a hole. And Reggie White there to meet him, no game. Well, our Aflac NFL trivia question, who is the only player to ever throw a touchdown pass for the L.A. Rams in a Super Bowl? Not a bad question. We'll have the answer for you shortly. I think you have to go back to what, 1979. Big play for the Rams. Ball at the 25, third and 10. Miller 
fires near side. Pass is caught by Isaac Bruce. It will not be enough for a first half. Stop made by Corey Harris. And the field goal team will come out, led by Tony Zendejas. Right here you see Chris Miller in the shotgun. Receives nice protection. Right there, number 72, Clarence Jones, working on Sean Jones. Gives him plenty of time, but the pass comes up short. So be a 37-yard field goal attempt by Tony Zendejas. He is 6 of 7 on the year and has hit six in a row. Nearly blocked. Zendejas gets it away, and it is good. So the Los Angeles Rams on the road here at Lambeau Field. Defender was blocked. 6 05 to go in the first half. They have taken a 17 3 lead over the hometown Packers. Well, the answer to our Affleck trivia question about the only Ram to throw a touchdown pass in a Super Bowl. Well, last night when they brought that question up, I sat there and I thought about it, thought about it. I said, this question can't be that easy. It can't be a quarterback. But I had to think back to my last year in college when I was there and the Rams played uh, in that Super Bowl. And I have to say, I came up with the answer last night. It was tough, yeah, but I came up about the fourth try. <laughs> and about five clues. <laughs> Another very short kick. Ball is dropped by Corey Harris. Gets back up on his feet. And he gets out across the 30-yard line. And that's where the Packers will put it in play. Boy, Darrell Henley is all over the field here this afternoon. The Rams have been most impressive here at Lambeau Field. They lead 17-3. Well, for these two cops, the biggest danger in working deep cover is getting too deep. Critics are calling them the coolest cops since Miami Vice. Watch New York Undercover Thursday at 9 Eastern, 8 o'clock Central, following Martin and Living Single. 17 to 3 Rand. Barb comes out throwing the screen to Bennett. And he picks up close to 9 before being knocked out of bounds by Shane Conlon. See Brett Favre running down the field after a nice completion. And one of the things as we talked to him this weekend, we asked him, how about the fans cheering when you throw the ball away and avoid taking a sack? And he said that was nice at first. You see, the one thing he had a tendency to do is hold on to the ball too long, then he would get sacked. So finally, when he wouldn't see a receiver, he would throw it away, throw it out of bounds, maybe into the stand. They cheered that. Now he says it's getting a little uh, out of hand. And as he ran on this series, they booed him as he ran on the field. Reggie Cobb. Initially hit behind the line of scrimmage by Conlon and then breaks a couple of more tackles and turns it out to the 45. That's good hard running by the former 1,000-yard rusher with the Buccaneers, Reggie Cobb. Well, that shows me a lot for Reggie Cobb to be able to block or to break a tackle from 56. Shane Conlon right there has him wrapped up, but hard running turns it upfield. Reggie Cobb, we talked about him earlier in the game makes an excellent play, and Shane Conlon is not an easy one to get away from when he has you wrapped up. First and 10, Green Bay to tone 45. Barb steps up, throws the long ball downfield, and he missed a tight end at West. Well, if that one's on the money, the Packers get their first touchdown of the game. We got a little pressure from Fred Stokes, the right defensive end going against Ken Rutgers. He did have, right here, you see him on this side, right there, you have him. He's coming against Ken Rutgers. He has plenty of time, but late, he gets the ball off, but he overthrows it a little bit. A little pressure, a little pressure from uh, Fred Stokes right here, right at the end, after he throws the ball. I thought maybe he'd hit him before he threw, threw the ball, but uh, he got him just afterwards, and last week, he knocked Jeff George out of the game. That's Fred Stokes. Here comes the blitz. Favre goes down under the wrap of Joe Kelly, the ninth year pro out of Washington. Second sack of the game. And I tell you what, last week the Rams in that loss to Atlanta sacked the quarterback five times. They're getting used to this. Well, one, one of the things that they've been able to do is, is go come with the blitz at times. And, and uh, you know, they don't, they don't necessarily have to do it all the time, but when they do, they've been able to get through. And right here, Joe Kelly, Comes through and makes the sack. Last week, Shane Conlon got through and made a sack on a blitz by the linebacker. 
four receivers into the game for the Packers on this third and 19. Far back to throw. Dumps off the screen and the Rams saw it coming. They go to LaShawn Johnson, but a terrific play by the Rams defense and the outside linebacker Roman Pfeiffer. With Pfeiffer having an all pro like year for George Dyer, the defensive coordinator of the LA Rams. Well, as we talked to Shane Conlon yesterday, we're talking about how he feels about playing with this defense. As he says, we're all comfortable now. We're coming together. And one of the first guys he mentioned was Roman Pfeiffer, the 6'2", 230-pounder, fourth-year pro out of UCLA. Hendrick, back to punt. And it's a good one. Flag on the play. Johnny Bailey taking the ball out across the 30, but again, a flag back near where Hedrick punted the football. And it'll go against Green Bay. Official gave the sign holding against the, the punting team against Green Bay. Once again, talk to the coaches, talk to the players. They know one of the things they have to do is eliminate mistakes. Uh, you, we talked earlier about the miss, miss uh, cues on the, on the special teams. And once again, right here, as they attempt to punt the ball, they have a holding penalty. So. The penalties, the mistakes continue to Holding hurt this Green Bay Packers. Number 83 on the kicking team. Penalties decline. First down. Holding against Jeff Wilner. Jeff Wilner, right here, number 83, comes into the screen, has his arm around the Los Angeles Ram, and that is an obvious one. You cannot bear hug the guy and expect <laughs> to get away with it. Well, you tried it a few times. In your career, you get And I didn't get away with no, it. No, you did First and ten. The Rams, a 17-3 lead. The give to Jerome Bettis. He has a hole, and he head bangs his way out to the 40. Coach made the tackle on Well, this Bennett. Ram offense came in, Anthony Munoz, only averaging 13 points a game. They've gone right by that here today. I tell you, they've, they've come out here realizing that their defense has been playing well, knowing that they have to step it up, knowing they have to score points. 17 points with two, uh, two minutes and 45 left in this half. They've come out, and they're doing an excellent job here. 41 yards rushing on the afternoon for Jerome Bettis. He'll try to add to it. Not much room. And it'll bring up a third down as he's just a bit short. Of the 43 Butler, where they need to get for a first down, Leroy Butler up to make the tackle. As we talk about this Ram offense, they're up 17 to 3. You know they have an excellent Third running game. They've Number been able to pass the ball. As an eligible receiver. They've been able to pass the ball right now. Wayne Gandy coming in as an eligible receiver. He lines up at the tackle or a tight end position. So now they're aware that he's in there. No questions about it. But as I was, I was saying about this offense, they have an excellent Two running game. They have a 14-point lead. And one of the things that this Packer defense doesn't want to see is this running game continue to pound them and pound them and pound them. We have reached a two-minute warning. The Rams in front, 17-3. to three. Next Sunday, Fox NFL Sunday begins at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, with the hottest one-hour pregame show on television. And except for Los Angeles, it's a Fox doubleheader. The Niners take on the Atlanta Falcons. Action continues at 4 when the Philadelphia Eagles take on the Dallas Cowboys. Check local listings for the game and time in your area right here on Fox Sports. Third down and a yard. And Bettis slammed at the line of scrimmage by Fred Strickland. It might not be enough. In fact, it won't be enough for a first down. That Packer defense doing an excellent job. Ram offensive line wasn't able to get a push on that defensive line. You see right here, Steve McMichael, number 90. Brad Strickland coming in there late, clogging things up and making the Rams punt it away. So the Packers spend a timeout. They'll get it back with a minute 45 left in the half. Rams in front with a minute 45 left in the first half, 17-3. Tom Brenneman, Anthony Munoz back at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Jackie Slater having an outstanding day. We haven't heard much from Reggie White. No, we haven't. And as we mentioned at the beginning of the game, they line Reggie up over Jackie Slater, then inside. And 
regardless to where they're putting him, we haven't called out Reggie's name. Waiting on the Landetta punt, number 87, Robert Brooks. Low line drive. And it'll roll out of bounds around the 24, 23 yard line. And that's where the struggling Packer offense will put it in play. 34 yard punt by Sean Landetta. Coming up on the Dockers halftime, James and Terry will have all the scores and highlights. Plus, we'll look at this year's best bone-jarring hits in a new edition of Crunch Time. That's all coming up next on the Dockers halftime. What has this Ram defense done to the Packer offense? Well, they've, they've taken away the screen pass that's been so effective for this Packer offense. Uh, they've not allowed them to really run the ball that well. And I really believe they're giving them some different looks with the blitz and uh, maybe faking the blitz and making Brett Farr really think about what he's got to do. Dumps it off to Edgar Bennett. He crosses the 30-yard line. Conlon and Pfeiffer, we've heard a great deal from that duo today. The clock continues to run down to a minute 20 here in the first half. Packers in the hurry-up offense. And Farr back to throw. Near side. Of Sterling Sharp on the coverage. Todd White Sharp was looking for a flag. You asked me what has this Ram defense been doing, and you have to look at number 41, Todd Light, and Daryl Henley, those cornerbacks who are having an excellent game so far. Now this defense right here, you see at the end, the ball is thrown well, but Todd Light makes an excellent break. Makes a nice play. I mean, the fans are booing, they're not happy with that call, but. To me, that was an excellent play by Todd Light, fourth-year player out of Notre Dame. Third down for the Packers, five to go. Barb rolling right. He'll keep it himself. He slides across the 35. It should be enough for a Packer first down. We're down to a minute here in the second quarter. Barr brings his team to the line of scrimmage. Clock continues to run. The ball just now being placed down. Well, that official has to get the ball there. The offensive line was ready to go. But they had no football to play with. Barr across the middle to the tight end, Ed West. Another first down as it's out to the 47. And that's Second where the Packers timeout. will ask for a timeout. They have one left here in the first half. Red Favre traded to the Packers back in 1982 from Atlanta. He was the youngest player ever to appear in a Pro Bowl. He's been there twice. This season, the, the numbers are very good. He's 19 and 15 since he took over as a regular quarterback. But there's still debate, and maybe some in a head coach's mind, if he's the guy long term. Well, at least that's what we got from our meeting with Coach Holmgren this weekend. But uh, I guess one of the uh, impressive things that I heard this weekend that says this guy is moving in the right direction, hopefully for this team, is that talking to some of the offensive players, they believe that Brett Favre has finally come in this year and said, this is my offense. He's taken control of the huddle. He's taken control of this offense. And they really feel that he's matured a lot as a quarterback in that aspect that he has come in and say, I'm the leader of this group. Well, one thing you got to love about him is his makeup. He is as tough as they come uh, among the quarterbacks in the NFL. Clock at 39 seconds. First and 10, just shy of midfield. Far. Over and throw. Sterling Sharp nearly intercepted by Keith Lyle, the rookie out of Virginia. Well, the boos are coming back out. And, you know, right then he gets excellent protection from his offensive line. And that ball just sails over the wide receiver. A wild thrown ball. And he once again hears the boos here. Lyle has already intercepted a couple of passes this year. His father, Gary Lyle, played for the Chicago Bears back in the late 60s, early 70s. Second and 10. 35 seconds left to play here in the first half. Rams in front. 17 to 3. Far side. Caught. And getting out of bounds is Ron Lewis. Tom, as I look at Brett Favre going back and setting up, and we know he's gotten a little pressure today, but I look at his body motion. He gets back there. Even though he, he has protection, he's not sitting back there real calm poised. He is, 
he's really jittery back there moving around and I think that's affecting him when he throws the football. I'm sure that Mike Holmgren sees the same thing. Yep, and again, we can't stress enough that uh, he really believes uh, through this year he's going to determine if Brett Favre is their man for the future. Third down and seven for the Packers. Favre down the middle. And the reception made by Robert Brooks. The first down. Clock continues to run to 20 seconds. It's at the 31. And now a uh, whistle blows, stopping the clock with 18 seconds left. Apparently the Packers have spent their final timeout. No indication on that timeout. We have to assume that Green Bay did indeed stop it. Green Bay called a timeout at 20 seconds. Well, for an offense that is, that is struggling this first half, and right here you see the standings and, and the Rams, uh, they're not out of it. They're only a game down, so they still have some life here in this uh, NFC West. Getting back to this Green Bay offense, they're struggling this first half. They only have three points. This is a great time for them to at least get a field goal, get some points on the board right before halftime because it is a big boost as an offensive player when you go in right before halftime to having scored some points. Regardless of what you've done that whole first half, you know you have to make some adjustments. You know you have to improve some things. But if you can put some points on the board, that always gives you some confidence going into the locker room at halftime. Well, let's see what Favre and company can do. They reset the clock at 20 seconds. Favre, 13 out of 20, 94 yards. He has been intercepted, and he has fumbled. Two key turnovers by the Green Bay offense here in the first half. Thus, a Ram 17-3 lead. First and 10. Barr in trouble, and he'll be taken down by Jimmy Jones, a former Dallas Cowboy. Clock. Or now they stop the clock. I don't know why the clock is stopped. Now they wind it back up. Down to 10 seconds, and Favre will spike the football. Incomplete pass. Right there, I believe what happened, and they stopped the clock as he got sacked, so they stopped it momentarily to get things set up, and then they restarted it. Uh, you know, but then again, he downs it on third down to give them a chance to kick a field goal. And right there, he, he didn't have bad protection. He had, you know, good protection, but... The Ram defense had excellent coverage there. He tried to step it up the middle because late he felt the pressure coming around the ends, and Jimmy Jones was right there to bring him down. To be a 49-yard field goal attempt by Chris Jackie, and that is his long this season. Jackie bangs it away and missed it wide right. It has been a disastrous first half for the Packers, a terrific opening half. For the L.A. Rams, six seconds remaining and a 17-3 Los Angeles lead. The Rams have played wonderful this first half, not only offensively but defensively. Now it's just a matter of going in at halftime. The Rams making some minor adjustments in this Green Bay team, regrouping, knowing exactly what they have to do. Once again, cut the mistakes out offensively and defensively. You know, they've been put in a tough situation with those turnovers by their offense. Miller will just take it down on the knee to run out the clock. So that is the end of the first half here at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. The L.A. Rams 17, the Green Bay Packers 3, Fox NFL Sunday. We'll continue after this message from your local Fox station. This is the Dockers Halftime. Don't just get dressed. Get Dockers. But it's all in that litter, so right? All right, and welcome to the Dockers Halftime. A banged-up Chris Miller at the helm for the Rams, and he's pacing him to a 17-3 lead. Two superstars engage in a little pregame chat. Play action by Favre, having a hard time with intercepts. Oh, this ball, I don't know why he threw it. I don't know where he's throwing it, but evidently, Henley, there he is. Daryl Henley turns to interception, 33 yards, setting up the Rams' first touchdown. Mm -hmm. And there it is. Drayton. On the receiving end of that one, and the score, as we mentioned, 17 to 3 right now. Chris Miller, 8 of 10 for 83 yards, two touchdowns, that in the first half. San Francisco has spotted Detroit to a 14 nothing lead, have come back to tie it up at the half late in the second quarter, that is. Hey, Barry Sanders, dangerous when he's wide awake. Well, he's dang yeah, dangerous when he's asleep. 
Look at Mitchell. A little pop action. I guess the safety out of there. Perriman down. Goes to the post. Turns the corner around. Gets back to the corner. Beautiful 33-yard TD reception. And now my man Barry inside. One, two, three, four, five, six. To the outside. Jimmy Johnson loves this guy. <laughs> you gave him two extra moves. And there's William Floyd with the power move for San Francisco. And right now their score is all tied up at 14 apiece. Barry Sanders. 63 yards in the first half. Okay, moving to Chicago. Right now, the Saints are leading that one 7 to nothing. Jim Everett, the man there, Terry's been a supporter of his yeah. as well. I like him because he likes to throw the ball down the field. Deep corner or deep end right there, as you see by Quinn Early, his second touchdown reception of the year. I love quarterbacks that'll stand in there and throw the ball 20, 25 yards down the field and throw it over the middle. There's a big void there, and very few quarterbacks do it, or very few offensive coordinators in the league, J.D. Well, let them do it. Well, let them do it. This guy ever can do it right now, come back player of the year, believe it or not. And you also said the Saints are doing it on the ground. They have 79 yards in the first half, best so far this year. Okay, Tampa Bay and Atlanta. Atlanta all on top of the Bucks, 24 nothing. Craig Hayward doing the job there. Jeff George, another guy you've been... I can't say that word, Kenny. You like him. I like him. And I like this guy, too. He's lost 60 pounds, overcome some personal problems, a couple, couple of TD rushes for him. Speed on speed, always. You love speed. Andre, down the corner. He can't stay up with him. Jeff George, although he has two interceptions, has the, what are you laughing at? I could, has I can, a touchdown. <laughs> Wake I, up, Dave. I can use that expression. You suck up, suck up to no, Jeff George. No, 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 I wouldn't do that. <laughs> All right, Craig Erickson has been benched in this one right now, replaced by Trent Dilfer. Okay, a couple of other scores that pass along. We mentioned to you before how Marv Levy has a dandy Don Shula's number. He's leading right now, 7-3 Bills over top of the Dolphins. And the Jets are trailing Indianapolis. Indianapolis, two field goals, lead it by three. Back Get with more after this. And welcome back to Doctors Halftime. You know, this season has had some great hits, plays, runs, and passes. And chances are you haven't had a chance to see all of these, unless that is you have 15 VCRs and 40 hours in a day. But we're here to change all of that. In the coming weeks, we'll show you all those plays you just don't have the time to see. And we begin with the best hits so far this season. We call it Crunch Time. Boy, if there was any doubt about whether or not football players earn their money, I'm sure those highlights convinced you firmly. And we'll have highlights like that for you in future halftimes right here on the Dockers Halftime. And we'll have more on the Dockers Halftime after this. You're watching Fox NFL Sunday. Back at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin, where the Los Angeles Rams have taken to the road, and they have taken a 17-3 lead here at halftime. Hi again, everybody. I'm Tom Brenneman alongside Anthony Munoz, and uh, who would have expected this big fella? Well, we knew both defenses were playing well, and we knew that both offenses were not doing that well. One offense came into this game and is playing extremely well, and that's the Ram offense. They've been able to mix it up, run the ball, play action fakes, throw downfield, right now they're ahead Chris Miller getting a start today and he has had a terrific afternoon a couple of highlights from the first half both scoring plays led oh, by Chris Miller excuse me Tom right here you have the Ram offensive line making it look like a run coming off attacking that defensive line all of a sudden Chris Miller pops up hits Troy Drayton for a, a touchdown reception there and again it's sold by that offensive line pounding it into that defensive line and then they throw a touchdown and right here's their second touchdown 
Chris Miller goes back, uh, a little token fake. Gets some pressure there by Bryce Hulk. Rolls to the right. Once again, number 84, Troy Drayton, along the end line, takes it to the corner, back inside a little bit. Chris Miller makes a nice throw for his second reception. That's Troy Drayton's second reception. First half highlight is brought to you by MCI Proof Positive, and the numbers certainly do not lie from the first half. Well, no question about it. Uh, points off turnovers, to me, is the big one that stands out. The Rams, 10 points off the turnovers by the Packers. Total yards, not bad. 134 for the Packers, 125 for the Rams. But once again, the big stat is that 10 points off the turnovers for the Rams. Fred Favre had a rocky first half, and you see what the Rams' blitzing defense has done to him thus far. Well, they've blitzed him eight times. They've gotten through for two sacks, three knockdowns. And the one stat that is usually a lot more important than people give credit are the hurries. Six hurries by that Ram defense, one interception and one fumble. They have to get things turned around here, and that Ram defense continues to create things that happen for this Ram team that gives that offense a chance to put points on the board. Well, the Rams will get it to begin the second half, picking off Chris Jackie. Johnny Bailey, number 21. Todd Kinchin, number 81 waiting to receive. It'll be Bailey at the 7. He smacked inside the 20, and that's where he's taken down. Tackle made by Dorsey Levins, a rookie out of Georgia Tech. Well, you look at Jerome Bettis rushing the ball today. Effectively, you look at the left side, he's taken it five times for 19 yards, three times up the middle for 10, and five times around the right side for 14 yards. So they're, they're not just taking it one area, they're going all three, left, right, and also up the middle. Jerome Bettis, four straight 100-yard rushing game. Trying to make it five here today. He'll take the handoff across the 20 out near the 22. Tackle made by Sean Jones and Steve McMichael. Right there, they tried going up the middle with Jerome Bettis, and Sean Jones makes a nice play coming off his block from Clarence Jones to make that stop. Chris Miller in the first half, 8 out of 10, 83 yards, two touchdown passes. Well, not bad for a guy. I know in the opening I mentioned that that was an unsettled position for them, and he comes out and has a real nice first half. Second down and six. The pitch to Jerome Bettis. Spins away. And he's out near the 23. So to bring up a third down, George Kuntz on the tackle. I want to remind you, this game is presented by authority. The National Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Green Bay Packers and the National Football League is prohibited. It'll bring up a third and six for Chris Miller and the L.A. Rams. Crowd coming alive. Four receivers check in. Here comes a blitz. Miller dumps it off. Making the reception is Jesse Hester, but he is short of the first down. The Rams will have to punt. He made a little attempt there at the end after he caught the ball to, to get that first down yardage, but he really couldn't. You see the, the Packers coming with the blitz. It's picked up here. Late coming off the right side, but Chris Miller makes a nice throw, and Hester can't quite get to that first down marker. Rams have to punt the ball away. John Landetta has had a good day. Waiting is number 87, Robert Brooks, alongside number 39, Mike Pryor. This is returnable. Pryor, across the 35, out near the 38. That's where Brett Favre and company will put it in play. Well, for these two cops, the biggest danger in working deep cover is getting in too deep. Critics are calling them the coolest cops since Miami Vice. Watch New York Undercover Thursday, 9 Eastern, 8 o'clock Central, following Martin and Living Single. Well, let's see what kind of adjustments the Packers made during halftime. I think one of the things this Packer offense has to do is be patient. 
They know they didn't do that well the first half, but they have to be patient and really go after it this second half. First and ten. Inside hand on to Reggie Cobb. Broke one tackle, but then he's tripped up. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Good play by Jimmy Jones, and then Anthony Newman and Roman Pfeiffer helped him out. And I know a lot of times mentally you don't get a whole lot in a quarter or a half, and you try to come back and get it all. And when I talked about being patient, just approach it like, okay, you got a whole half to play. You're only two scores down, two touchdowns down. We have plenty of time to just march it downfield and not try to get it all back in one time. Second down and 10. Far throws to Robert Brooks. First down, he crosses midfield to the Rams 49. Darrell Henley on the tackle. Right there is what you need from Brett Favre. There was a little pressure there, but right here you have Robert Brooks going one-on-one -on -one with Daryl Henley, takes it to the inside, and as I was mentioned, as I looked the protection over, Brett Favre stood in there, had Robert Brooks open, made a nice throw, and he just he didn't appear to be jittery like he was in the first half. First down and 10. Screen for Reggie Cobb. Room out in front. Down the sideline, pushed out of bounds to the 25. Boy, when Reggie Cobb handles the football, you better wrap him up. Well, they set that one up nicely, as you see right here. They go back. It appears to be a pass. He has the escort out there. Reggie Cobb makes a reception. Nice block on Joe Kelly, number 52, by Harry Galfreth. It appears that he's down, but great balance by Reggie Cobb. Regains his momentum and gets a few more yards. That was a heck of a run right there. 25-yard gain on the pass play. Five to Reggie Cobb, first and 10 at the 24. Play action. Plenty of time. And they go back to Cobb, but they saw it coming all the way. Good play by Joe Kelly. Right there, you have to give that Ram defense for excellent coverage in that secondary because Brett Favre had plenty of time. He looked the field over. He could not find a receiver downfield, so he had to dump it off to Reggie Cobb. And there to make an excellent play was Joe Kelly. George Dyer has spent the last 12 seasons work under, working under head coach Chuck Knox. He was a defensive line coach in Seattle. This is his third year as a Rams defensive coordinator. No gain on the play, second and 10. Sterling Sharp stiff arms his way close to another first down. Right here, number 84, Sterling Sharp, who's coming off a 112 reception year last year, 1993, takes it upfield, comes back a little bit, a little bit, excuse me, and Todd Light's there to make the tackle. But what made that happen is he First up Phil, but then he stopped and came back to the football. Todd Light has to respect the speed of Sterling Sharp, allowed him to make that reception. Slight limp you see there by Reggie Cobb on this very important third down. Third and about two. They throw to the tight end at West. First down inside the 10. So on this, the first drive of the second half by Brett Favre and the Packers. They have it inside the 10 yard line i hear brett Favre knows that he has a nice drive going you see excellent protection hit hits ed west right over the middle there ed west an interesting guy he's been around for 11 years played behind jackie harris for a couple years jackie harris was the big tight end signed in tampa bay as a free agent now he's back starting at tight end doing an excellent job not only catching the ball but blocking first and goal from the eight to the corner and the ball was tipped as he let it loose. DeMarco Farr there to tip it. Well what you have when you have a short drop like that you need the offensive lineman to get the defensive lineman's hands down and that you can do that by attacking them hitting them high and then maybe chopping them down. But you know your quarterback isn't going back that far, so you have to get those big guys' hands down on the defensive side of the ball. 
Favre, five of six on this drive for 54 yards. Second down and goal from the eight. Good protection. Nearly intercepted by number 22, Marquez Pope. Not only was Pope there on the coverage, but also Anthony Newman, the free safety. Favre might have tried to force that one in there a little bit. Here's a, I mean, this is the thing with this Packer offense. You know, at times they're three and out. Here they have a nice drive going. And, I mean, you, you never know what Packer offense is going to show up. They're, they have the ability to march it downfield and to score and to put long drives together. First charge, timeout, Green Bay. Well, Green Bay spends its first timeout of the second half. They trail 17-3. to three. NFL Sunday is brought to you by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. By Magnavox, hey, we make technology people want. And by the NASDAQ stock market, the stock market for the next hundred years. On the last play where, where Brett Favre's throwing, almost had it intercepted, he sees Sterling Sharp in front of Marcus Pope. I'm sorry, Anthony Newman, but he doesn't see Marcus Pope coming over. Two men right in that area where he makes that throw almost has it intercepted. So a third down and goal for the Packers. Bar. Throws. Touchdown Sharp. The Packers march down the field on this their first drive of the second half, and they've cut it to 17-9 Rams. Well, you can only go so many times putting one-on-one -on -one coverage on Sterling Sharp, and right here against Todd Lott, Light, he takes it to the middle, and Brett Favre hits him for the touchdown. It can work once or twice, maybe three times, but when you try to keep going man-to-man -man coverage with Sterling Sharp, they're going to beat you. Jackie nails the extra point. So the Packers, led by their superstar Sharp, trail by seven. A look back in this Rams-Packer rivalry in 1966. The teams met twice late in the first game with the Packers holding a three-point lead. Green Bay quarterback Brett Starr hit running back Elijah Pitts for an 80-yard touchdown reception, sealing a 24-13 victory. The teams met again in the last regular season game of the year. Closely fought game until Bob Jeter's 78-yard interception return sealed it. Packers went on to win the first Super Bowl. Johnny Bailey out across the 25, tackled just shy of the 30. A very impressive drive by the Green Bay Packers to begin the second half. More on that when we return. 8.49 left to play in the third quarter. Los Angeles 17, Green Bay 10. 17-10, Rams in front of the Green Bay Packers. Reggie Cobb over on the sidelines. Saw a little bit of a limp there on that last drive. Well, I noticed he went down, he was grabbing his lower leg, and then he came up and start, tried to jog it off. It appears he's moving around there uh, pretty good. First and 10 for the Rams. Chris Miller just throws it away. Trying to set up the screen, there was just nothing there. Well, that was a good move. He didn't see anything, a lot of defensive players there, so just throw it at the feet. Don't let it be intercepted, but right now is a great opportunity for this Ram offense to take some of this momentum away from this Packer team. The Packer team came out in the second half, put a nice drive together, scored a touchdown, and what the Rams don't need is for them to go three and out and give this Packer team a lot more momentum, especially with this home crowd just waiting to get behind this team. Three wide outs into the game, second and ten. Play action, the fake to Bettis. Miller, long ball downfield, nearly intercepted by George Teague, the second year safety out of Alabama. Teague slow to get up. Timeout injury. Not good for this Green Bay defense who just had Leroy Butler come back after having pneumonia out for a few games. Now George Teague laying on the ground there, not moving uh, a whole lot. Right here you see at the end of the play, he jumps up. He does get his hands on it, but hits the ground hard and then 
Flipper Anderson falls over the top of him. And right from there, you see him. He's just laying there. George Teague is not moved. But we'll let you know about him when we come back. 8.39 to go in the third. 17-10 Rams. The Rams 17, the Packers 10. Here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Third down and 10. George Teague is able to get up, walk off the field under his own power. That's good news for the Packers. Here comes a blitz. Miller trying to get it to Bailey. Made the catch. And he's out across the 35, but short of the first down. So Anthony Munoz, you pointed out, the last thing Chris Miller and company needed, the way the momentum's going, is a three and out. And that's where they'll head. And this Packer defense makes an excellent play right here. Chris Miller going back, setting up the screen. Doug, Doug Evans coming off the corner to, on the blitz. Throws a little high, but Johnny Bailey makes a nice catch. Gets away from Bryce Pup. But Sean Jones is there to make the tackle with Mike Pryor coming up and finishing it off. The Rams have to punt the ball away. Sean Landetta puts a charge into this one. Robert Brooks all the way back to the 15. Across the 30. Rick Rowe cuts it back down the sideline. He could go. One man to beat. And Brooks has scored. Return touchdown by Robert Brooks. And the Packers have a chance to tie it at 17. What a play. You talk about a switch in momentum, and what quicker way to do that than run a punt back for a touchdown. And right now, this fan, these fans are coming alive as Robert Brooks runs it back for a touchdown. And you see right here, setting up his blockers. Nice block there. Takes it up the middle, into the outside. Sean Lindetta, number five. Dives, doesn't make the tackle, and he's on his way right there. Blair Bush is not going to catch him. Mike Pryor there to lead him into the end zone. And the extra point is good. So the Packers, here in less than seven minutes, have scored 14 points. They trailed 17-3 at halftime. Now it's a dead heat. Well, these are the type of halftimes. I wish I had my camera in there listening to what they were saying to get this Packer team fired up because they've come out here not only offensively, but special teams Robert right here. Brooks Robert Brooks down. takes it, avoids it. Missed tackle by Howard Griffith, number 30. And then he's gone. Lindetta dives, but there's no way he could make the tackle. And he's going right here. Blair Bush, Joe Kelly, Tom Humko, Chris Martin, Lyle, no way. Robert Brooks all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. And that last block delivered by Mike Pryor and Robert Brooks. The punt return touchdown, 85 yards. It is a 17-17 affair in Green Bay. This is turning in to a terrific game. Well, we talked about earlier about the miscues in their last game with their special team. And right now, they've gotten them back into the game with the 17-17 tie. And they're fired up here at Lambeau Field. And what a place this is to watch a football game. Oh, Unbelievable. Our weekend here, we, we go over to the Packer Hall of Fame, and, and I was in awe just looking at a lot of the displays, having an opportunity to de see a display of a guy that I played for, Forrest Gregg, who was an offensive lineman, Martin Starr. We just go on and on with the great players of this Packer history. Brooks, the touchdown to tie it. Sean Gilbert has left the game with a shoulder injury. He more than likely will not return. And Troy Drayton, a couple of touchdown receptions for the Rams. Todd Kinchin across the 20 to the 30. Still on his feet. And Fryer makes a tackle all the way up to the 44. 36-yard return. Well, right now, Chris Miller's facing a, a crucial uh, set of downs right here. He comes out. A lot of momentum now for this Green Bay football team. He's got to come out here, settle his offense down, say, hey, guys, we did it in the first half. There's no question we can do it in the second half. Let's just go about business the way we've been doing it prior to this, this third quarter and just try to pump some confidence back into his players. Normally, that starts with Jerome Bettis. Nope, they'll go to the air. Catch is made by Drayton. 
He's out to the 47. Now, Troy Brayton, you know, uh, we brought up earlier, he had complained being unhappy with the offense. He only had uh, seven receptions coming into the game thus far here today, and they've gotten it to him uh, part of their game plan. You think Coach Chuck Knox heard Brayton complaining? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Chuck Knox been at it a long time. <laughs> Second down and five. <laughs> the pitch to Bennett. Tries to cut it back inside. He does so out to the 49. Tripped up by Fred Strickland. Bring up a third down and about four. The Packer defense did an excellent job stringing that play out. Pushing that offensive unit backwards and not giving Jerome Bettis the line of scrimmage. And he had a hard time turning it up because a lot of bodies were in front of him. Fritz Shermer, the outstanding defensive coordinator for these Green Bay Packers. He was a former Rams defensive coordinator. Third down and four. Miller out of the shotgun. Tries to get loose, the ball comes loose. Sean Jones able to strip it away. And let's see. Apparently, the Rams able to jump on the football. Yeah, Miller recovered the fumble. Sean Jones, the kind of player that can be quiet. And you, I'm talking about his style of play. You might not notice him out there. He'll make a play here and there. All of a sudden, when they need a big sack or a big tackle, the big number 96 comes in there at 6'7", 275 pounds, and he'll make a big play. Two series, three and out for the Rams here in the second half. Well, I mentioned that they cannot afford to do that and just continues to give the Packers momentum. It'll be Robert Brooks again. And he will not take this one back. He is met immediately at the 24. And a good play made by Wyman Henderson. 5.35 to go here in the third quarter. Packers and Rams tied at 17. And right there, the biggest play of the game turned in by Robert Brooks on that punt return. Sorry to interrupt you briefly there, but I had to almost react to that hit. Wyman Henderson comes down, and he makes sure that uh, Robert Brooks doesn't do what he did uh, the previous punt uh, return. And, boy, I just rattled when he hit that uh, hit Robert Brooks. And we'll take a look at it. Robert Brooks takes the punt, starts up, field, and right here, whack. Ooh, wow. Doesn't make you miss the game, does it? No, not at all, not at all. All right, first and ten for Farm in the Packer offense. And he's coming out throwing. Out of the backfield, Edgar Bennett breaks a tackle. And he's across the 35. Good enough for a Green Bay first down. Edgar Bennett, a fourth-round draft choice out of Florida State. Came into the game today, 33 receptions on the year. Well, Brett Farr goes back, hits Edgar Bennett, who's one-on-one -on -one with linebacker Joe Kelly, has some separation, makes a nice move there, taking it, faking the outside move and then taking it in, gains about two, three extra yards. But right there, that was a nice open field move by Edgar Bennett. Bennett now six receptions on the day, giving him 39 on the year. He'll hand it off to Reggie Cobb. Good play and hot pursuit by Shane Conlon on the tackle. Let's send it back to our Hollywood studio and the main man, James Brown. All right, Tom, Chicago had trailed 7-0 at the half. They now lead at 10-7. Coming up on this score here, Walsh to Jeff Graham. First touchdown receiving in 103 receptions. Bears on top by three. That in the third. Back to Green Bay, Tom and Anthony. All right, James Brown, thank you very much. It's 17-17. It was a 17-3 Rams lead at halftime. Barb directed a long drive, getting him the first touchdown here in the third quarter, then an 85-yard punt return by Robert Brooks tied the game. Sterling Sharp breaks the tackle. Still on his feet. Close to midfield, another Green Bay first half. To me, I'm just seeing a different quarterback back there in Brett Favre. He's going back. He's planting himself, and then he's finding and throwing to his receiver. Just a, a totally different guy back there. As you see right here, he just throws the ball. He's not worried about what's around him. He's looking and hitting his receivers as he does right here with Sterling Sharp. And what a guy to hit. Big guy, strong for a wide receiver. Continues to move upfield after making the catch. Five receptions, including a touchdown today for Sterling Sharp. 
First and ten. The handoff to Bennett. Thrust into a stone wall by the name of Robert Young. Fourth year pro out of Mississippi State. Robert Young making a nice inside move against Joe Sims, the big offensive tackle for the Packers. It was almost like a pass rush move. He gave him a nice little swim, came inside and made the tackle. Robert Young, five sacks this year, off to a great start after last year. He was off to a nice start, got injured, and he's basically picked it up where he left off last year before getting hurt. Extra wide receiver Ron Lewis checking in for the Packers on this second and 12. Bar across the middle, in and out of the hands of Lewis. Boy, that throw right on the money. That ball should have been caught by Ron Lewis, the fifth-year pro out of Florida State. Bar put it right there. But this Green Bay offense so hard to figure, and Mike Holmgren echoed those thoughts in our meeting with him a couple of days ago. They came out, took an early 10-0 lead against New England, then went 23 minutes of scoreless football. Well, you watch the first half of that last week's New England game, and they're up 10 points, and all the, you say this offense is on the in a rhythm, on the move, and then you watch the second half, not the same offense. Third and 12, nearly intercepted. And on the coverage was Robert Bailey. Bailey. So the Packers will have to punt. That was just an excellent play by Robert Bailey, the fourth-year pro out of Miami of Florida. Made a nice break. You see right here, nice protection up the middle by Jamie Dukes, number 63, right here, giving him that middle. Marquez Pope on a late blitz, but right here, Sterling Sharp open, but Bailey makes an excellent dive and knocks it away. Bailey had four interceptions last season, a knee injury into this season. And the punt is away. Taken at the 16 by Bailey. And then he is wrapped up by number 89, Mark Shamira. 2.32 to go in the third. Green Bay and Los Angeles tied at 17. If you're looking for action and adventure, turn to Fox this Friday night and meet a new breed of superhero, Mantis, followed by the show USA Today calls Excellent, Thrilling, and Terrifying, The X-Files. It's a night of brand new episodes this Friday on Fox. 17 all. 2.32 to go in the third. First and 10 for the Rams. Jerome Bennett across the 20, pounds his way ahead of the 27. George Koontz on the tackle. It's amazing to watch a guy of his size to make that nice cutback. He starts that ball off to the left. He sees that it's kind of clogged up there, and he takes it back. And, you know, that's the amazing thing about the ball players that are coming into the league now. They're getting bigger, but they're also getting quicker and stronger. And just, uh, I enjoy watching people like that run the ball and, and run the way they do. Gain of eight for Bettis, second and two. He's rushed for 56 yards here in the game. He'll get it again. Tripped up by number 65, John Yurkovic. Here's as though he will be short of the first down. It'll bring up third and short. The Packers have come out this second half. Defensively have shut down that Ram offense. Special teams have played well. And here's a guy number that 70, really as reported as an eligible receiver. We saw number a picture 70. of number 92 that we really haven't talked a whole lot about this game. I tell you, they want to keep this guy asleep. They got momentum going. The Rams do not want to wake up number 92, Reggie White. Third down and a yard. Pettis takes the pitch. He has stopped short of the first half. Stripped up by Koontz. Strickland finished him off. That is terrific defense by one of the real underrated defensive players in the NFL, George Koontz. He's the Packers' leading tackler. Excellent football player out of East Carolina. Stands 6'1", 240. And when you have a defense with superstars like Reggie White, I'm John out. Jones, as we look at Vern Brostek here on the ground, not moving around uh, real well right now. He's in his fifth season. Well, you may yeah. remember, Anthony, uh, he sprained both of his ankles, had to leave the game last week against Atlanta. And because they have Tom Newberry, who was a center at one time, they were able to move him, Tom Newberry, back to center. And right now, 
Fern Brostek is being helped off the field, so they have to move Newberry to, to center as they did last week. Right here you see Newberry pulling out. Bettis taking it upfield. You see Vern Brostick back in the background, grabbing his ankle right from the beginning of the play. Not a good time for this Ram offensive line. Not good news at all. And he, the way he's walking, it appears that it is that ankle. He's not putting any pressure on it. Landetta punting for the third time here in the second half. Brooks had an 85-yard punt return touchdown to tie the game at 17. Partially may have been blocked maybe off the side of his foot, but a terrible kick by Landetta. And Green Bay will take over in Rams territory, a 13-yard punt. You hate to see that, especially with this Packer team coming back here. You want to get one off back them back up into their end of the field but a 13 yard punt by a guy Sean Landetta who's been having a great year last week last week he had five inside of the 20 right here you see he just shanks the ball off the side of the foot and that's why he just got 13 yards on that one that's kind of like my wedge shot on the golf course yeah <laughs> 40 yards right and 13 <laughs> yards long far play action fires near side Catch is made by Sterling Sharp. Todd Light drags him down. Well, they're going to their main man, Sterling Sharp, here in the second half. Maybe that's what Mike Holmgren said at halftime. That's right. He said, uh, we have a guy, Sterling Sharp. Let's get him into the mix of things. And right now, they're picking on number 41, Todd Light, and they're going to Sterling Sharp. Not a bad guy to go to. That'll be the final play of the third quarter. Our score, the Rams 17, the Packers 17. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local Fox station. There's something up there, Mulder. Ooh, I've been saying that for years. Fox. So Sunday begins at noon Eastern next Sunday. Then except for Los Angeles, the Fox doubleheader with the 49ers taking on the Falcons. Action continues at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. The Philadelphia Eagles take on the Dallas Cowboys. Check local listings for the game and time in your area right here on Fox Sports. Brett Farr, flushed out of the pocket, still on his feet, takes a shot as he's inside the 30. Marquez Polk coming up from his safety position to hit it. Excellent move by Brett Farr, getting away from that uh, pass rush there. He was surrounded. All of a sudden, he takes off, reverses his field, pressured by Fred Stokes, number 60, reverses his field, gets up, maybe does a little... Straight on there, gets up and gets the first down. I'll tell you, he took quite a shot, though, when he got tackled. You know, I, you were just giving me your, your uh, you know, your kind of imitation of a straight arm, lifting up your leg like a running back. I couldn't get my leg up, though. <laughs> first and 10, Marv in trouble. Dumps it out to West. Inside the 20, to the 10, the 5, down to the 2. Uh, you talked about him earlier, Ed West. The longest of any Packer in terms of tenure. And he's made two big receptions here in the second half. 26-yard gain. Well, like I mentioned earlier this half, Brett Farr is a different quarterback. The Rams come with the blitz. They bring Joe Kelly. Farr sees Ed West, gets it right to him, and then Ed does the rest. Nice completion, nice run. First and goal. The line of scrimmage is Edgar Bennett. So to bring up second and goal for Green Bay. The Packers have not led in the game thus far. Well, we talked about Brett Farr going back to pass. He, he drops back, gets some pressure by Jimmy Jones right there, but he dumps it off quickly. He shoots Joe Kelly flying across in front, coming on the blitz. To Ted West, and then Ed does the rest. Rambling downfield, close to the goal line. Second down and goal. Still trying to lunge ahead to the goal line, but he has stopped short. It'll bring up a third and goal for the Packers. 
Nothing like a crisp fall day. Close to winter, I think, with some of this winter weather. <laughs> then to hear those helmets crashing against each other down inside the five-yard line where they'll have a third down inside the red zone. And this is one of the areas that they said, we have to score once we get into the red zone. We can take the ball up and down between the 20, but now we have to score. The ball inside the one. And the Green Bay Packers lead for the first time in the game. Well, this is the part of the field where you have your 300-pounders against their 300-pounders, and then you say, let's see who's going to win. And the Green Bay Packers won that battle, the battle of the 300-pounders to score the touchdown. Beef on beef, as you like to say. That's right, or mano y mano. <laughs> Chris Jackie on to try and make it 24-17 Green Bay, and he does. The Packers trail by 14 at halftime. They have scored three touchdowns and lead by seven here in the second half. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Mitsubishi, the new thinking in automobiles. By Logo Athletic, get real with authentic team apparel. And by Subway, the place where fresh is the state. Get a look at the Fox River, which runs from Lake Michigan in this gorgeous state of Wisconsin. A 24-17 lead. You see the numbers by quarters. The Rams 17-3 at the break. Green Bay, a pair of touchdowns in the third. Bennett plows in from less than a yard here in the fourth. And the Packers lead by a touchdown. Jackie kicks it away. Bailey receives inside the five. Across the 20. And across the 25. The Green Bay Packers defense have gone to the field four times here in the second half. The Ram offense on four possessions, three and out. They are 0 for 7 on third down attempts today. I have a question. That Packer Hall of Fame is just down the street, not that far. You think maybe Mike Holmgren sent someone to get a Vince Lombardi pep talk on film, and they saw that at halftime? Boy, they've come out here and played a, a tremendous second half. Well, you could be right. First and 10 for Miller and the Rams. Now trailing. Miller goes in and out of the hands of his tight end, Troy Drayton. Troy, nothing going the Rams' way here in the second half. Second and 10, Troy remains on the Rams 45. Well, you see Troy Drayton running off the field. Chris Miller going back to pass. As you see, number 66, Tom Newberry now playing center, working against Steve McMichael. Miller makes the throw, thrown behind Troy Drayton a bit, and he cannot make the catch. Second down and 10. Miller out of his shotgun, looking around. Far side, terrific defensive play made by number 22, Lenny McGill, a rookie out of Arizona State. I mentioned Tom Newberry now playing the center position. They have Chuck Bellin playing left guard as Vern Brostick goes out. Lenny McGill making an excellent play to knock that ball off. You see right here, the left hand coming across front in front of Flipper Anderson to knock that one down. That was a nice defensive and play. And he was playing the ball. That's why you didn't see a flag. Look at those numbers here in the second half. Third and ten. Miller in trouble. And there's Reggie White. Ball comes loose. And able to recover is Los Angeles. But Reggie White laying the hit on the quarterback, Miller. Well, I talked about not waking up Reggie White. And that's exactly what Reggie White can do. He can come in and he can... Might not make a lot of big plays, but then all of a sudden you see him coming up here working on Jackie Slater, gets that corner, and all of a sudden he's there to take Chris Miller down. But he's the kind of player that can change things that are happening in the ball game, and quickly he can change it. Fifth punt of the second half by Landetta. Low line drive. 
And it's returnable. Fryer tripped up. But again, great field position for this Green Bay offense taking over at its own 44. Twenty-four seventeen, Green Bay in front. The sack made by the mountainous Tennessean Reggie White there a moment ago. Well, you see him right there with the baseball cap keeping the sun out of his eyes so he can get back in there. You know, right here you see Deacon David Deacon Jones right there, former Ram, 180 and a half career sack. And talking to Reggie, he shared a story with us about a conversation he had with Deacon Jones, and we'll get back to it after this play. First down for the Packers, and the handoff inside goes to Edgar Bennett. Reggie was saying that he was talking with Deacon Jones and said, Deacon, you have all these sacks. My goal is to someday get as many as you. And Deacon held out his hand and said, Reggie, regardless of how many sacks I had, I don't have a championship ring on this hand. And Reggie sat back and said, that's what this game's all about, is, is winning a Super Bowl, being a world champion. And Reggie White, in this is 10th season, not getting any younger. He signed uh, figuring Green Bay would have a chance before his career came to an end. They have looked terrific here in the second half. Farm in trouble. And he throws it away just before being taken down by DeMarco Farr. Well, DeMarco Farr filling in for Sean Gilbert, who went out with the shoulder injury. He's batted down a pass and right there putting excellent pressure on Brett Farr. DeMarco Farr, well, his favorite hobby is big-time professional wrestling. Now, listen to this, just to how far he took it. He went out and bought... 60 boxes of a kid's cereal, took the top off, you could trade him in to go see a big time wrestling match, and he was able to meet his idol Hulk Hogan. That's being a wrestling fan. <laughs> Third down and seven. Far. Getting sharp. Or rather, Robert Brooks across the middle, and it's good enough for a first down. Well, you know, at 270, he probably ate all of that cereal. That None of that <laughs> cereal went to waste. <laughs> How do you explain Brett Favre here in the second half compared to the first? Yeah, those are the things that are hard to explain. I mean, you see a quarterback or even an offense that one drive, they're putting it together, running the ball, he's back there, he hits the passes, and all of a sudden they come out three and out, or they're, they got a drive going, and, and all of a sudden there's a penalty or something. It's just hard to explain how he can come out and be so calm and poised one half, and the first half, not you know, he didn't do very well. They hand it off to Bennett. Try to cut it back inside. Todd Light wrapped him up after his short game. You know, the only thing that I might be able to, to think about in a case like that is he wants to create so much. He wants to create the big plays. Maybe he feels that he needs to, to make all the big plays instead of spreading it out and saying, okay, I have 10 other guys with me on the field. I'm going to let them make the big plays. I can make some, but they're going to make a lot of them also. Second down and seven for the Packers. Ball at the Rams. 43. Here comes the win. Barr just able to get it away, and he took a hit from Roman Pfeiffer. Roman Fo uh, Pfeiffer coming off that left side. Brett Favre's blind side. No one touched him, and he put a good hit on Brett Favre, and he's Brett Favre shaking his head down there. Right here, you see him coming off this side. Un well, unblocked right here. Edgar Bennett, I, I believe, needs to pick him up. He started to go out in a pattern, but then he looked back, and I think he thought, he was my man. I should have hit him, and he didn't. Therefore, it gave Roman Pfeiffer a clean shot on Brett Favre. 9.05 to go here in the game. Third down and seven for Green Bay, leading by seven. Blitz again. Favre able to get it away, nearly making a miraculous catch with Anthony Morgan. So Green Bay will have to punt. Anthony Morgan, the fourth-year pro out of Tennessee, stretches out, gets a hand on it, and almost comes down with the catch. Unbelievable, almost. That would have been a super catch there if he could have held on to that. Great effort by Anthony Morgan. The crowd saw the replay. Uh, a number of them must not see very well. That was not a catch. <laughs> Kendrick back to punt. And waiting is Johnny Bailey. Low snap, shielded it cleanly. And it will bounce into the end zone. 
Corey Harris almost able to come up with it. Fourth quarter, 8.53 to go. The Packers lead by seven. Well, we're going to take another look at Robert Brooks. Punt return for a touchdown right here. Number 87 taking it upfield. You see number 39 right there trailing him was actually right next to him as he made the catch. And Mike Pryor is there at the end to put a block on Todd Kinchin as Robert Brooks takes in for an 85-yard touchdown. First and 10 for the Rams, trailing 24-17. Dennis dropped it. It's on the ground. He was able to fall on top just before Steve McMichael got there. Uh, Jerome Bettis, uh, not exactly a big day today. He has been held under 60 yards on the afternoon. Again, to repeat something we brought up earlier, this Green Bay defense has not allowed an opposing rusher to gain more than 75 yards in any game thus far this season. You better believe that this Packer defense was well aware that Jerome Bettis was attempting to go for that fifth straight 100-yard day right here. 20 rushes, 51 yards. Second down and 15. Miller rolling right, lots of time. Throws near side, and the pass is caught. It's out close to a first down. Isaac Bruce on the reception. Well, Chris Miller has been getting pressure, so they roll him out to the right. He throws on the run. Nice catch by Isaac Bruce right here. Reggie White, number 92. They roll out. Jackie Harris or uh, Jackie Slater gets the first hit on him. Then you have number 30, Howard Griffith. They're saying, Jackie, get back here and give me some help. I can't take this guy alone. And they double him, double team him, and then Chris Miller gets off the pass. And it was a gain of 16, so a first half. Ball of the 31. Jerome Bennett trying to break it back outside, and he's close to the 35, a gain of almost five yards. Both teams came into the game, two wins, three defeats. Both teams also trailed in their respective divisions. Knox and the Rams in the West, Mike Holmgren and the Packers in the Central, trailing by just one game in the standings. By no means are they out of the races of their divisions, and uh, even if they lose this one, they're not out of it, but uh, the Rams would hate to lose this game, and the Packers would love to win it. Miller gives it to Bennett. Across the 35, it'll bring a third down. On that reception a moment ago made by Isaac Bruce, Anthony Munoz, that was the first first down by this Rams offense in the second half. Well, they've been going three and out quite a few times, and you have to give that Packer defense five times to be exact. That Ram offense came into the second half and went three and out. You can't win ball games by doing that. Again, if you're just joining us, the Rams have had a terrible time on third down conversion. Third and five. Here comes the blitz, and it's off the fingers of number 83, Willie Anderson. Corey Harris was on the blitz from the cornerback position. Chris Miller had some room there to, to try to hit Willie Anderson, but he just threw it high. You know, the Packer defense, you have to give them credit also. You know, that Ram offense is not doing things well, but then there's another side to it. That's the Packer defense. It's blitzing, getting pressure with their down linemen, and just mixing it up well enough to throw this Ram offense off guard here, off balance. Landetta boots it away. This is Robert Cook. Still on his feet. Out to the 35. Tackle made by Blair Bush. 47-yard punt. 6.08 to go from Lambeau Field. Packers 24, the Rams 17. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Porsche. Imagine the thrill of having to commute day after day after day. Get a look at the Green Bay Packer Hall of Fame just across the street. 
I mean, they house everything. Jerseys, helmets, even lockers and many Packer greats, as well as their Super Bowl trophies. We had a chance to get over there yesterday, Anthony Munoz. You're beginning to show your age a little bit. They charged you for an adult and me for a children's admission. <laughs> Well, I, I kind of initiated that. So we're having fun here. You get on me when we're in the hot cities and I'm sweating. I, I want to take my son over to the Hall of Fame. And uh, you know, we almost went, the lady almost <laughs> went for that. I said, one adult, one, ch one child. And she goes, and then she looked at you and said, he's an old kid. <laughs> yeah, you better believe it. Edgar Bennett taking the hand off. And he is out close to a first down. In fact, he will indeed pick up the first down. A 10-yard gain by Bennett. Clock ticking under six minutes to go. And the Packers leading by seven. Well, this Ram defense you know, has to step it up here. They, you know, Bar Bennett, well, Brett Favre, we're, we're talking down. Bart Starr, and all of a sudden we go to Brett Favre. <laughs> But Brett Favre has to generate something and not allow that Ram offense to get back on the field. Even though they've been struggling, they might still be able to spark them right here. they got to get things going. Reggie Cobb out close to midfield. Well, well, well. We went back in the archives of the National Football League going back to Southern California. Who is number 77, oh, the my former Trojan? Goodness. That's one of those wigs. Oh, my. <laughs> That's a good look for you, that air. Who is that guy? I don't know. I don't know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> You're speechless here, aren't you? Your wife, TD, sent those to us. That is unbelievable. Oh, boy. Oh, my. That's not a pretty picture. Oh. <laughs> I'm speechless because it scared me. <laughs> Imagine what you did in the city of Cincinnati after being a number one pick. False start prior to the snap, number 76. Five yards, still second down. I am really glad that it wasn't four minutes into the game, but it's four minutes left. I don't know if I could be able to finish this game if you'd have showed me that in the first quarter. My heart's beating. You scared me. Boy, how you have changed, huh? Well, that was the day when the long hair was in. Mine just happens to curl when it gets longer, so <laughs> I figured I'd go with the afro. That was a good-looking suit you had back in those days. Three-peat well. corduroy. I mean, you know, it was nice in 85-degree L.A. weather. And now look at you. They're, they're helping me out now. we got our Berninis on. <laughs> Get down at 11. Under five minutes to go. Going outside. Sharp makes the reception. And immediately hit by Todd Light. So to bring up a third down, this is perhaps the most important play of the game for the Rams defense trailing by seven and by the time Favre and the Packers get off this play there'll be about four minutes left to go in the game well it really is an important drive for this uh this Ram defense they need to get their offense back on the field that has struggled tremendously this second half they had a first good half so it's not like they've been struggling the whole game they did some things well in that first half so there should be some confidence there in the Ram offense saying hey we need one more touchdown to tie this baby up the defense has to put him in that position. Third and ten. Favre, a quick drop. Fires, and it's dropped. A rare drop by Sterling Sharp. Well, they go to their man that usually makes the catches in key situations. That's 84, Sterling Sharp. He's been making some excellent catches. And we'll look at Sterling Sharp right here as Brett Favre goes back trying to keep this drive alive. And he throws to him but they cannot complete the pass. Right here, nice throw, and Sterling Sharp, one thing, they come up with the ball. So the Rams will get it back. Hendrick dropping back. Good snap, and he boots it away. Bailey wears for the fair catch, and he'll make a clean reception, and the Rams will take over at the 23. Again, a reminder, at the end of this game, Anthony and I will select the Miller Lite player of the game. Well, here comes this Ram, Ram offense. Chris Miller taking the field. And again, can't stress enough the point that this Ram offense has generated some offense today. They've scored some points. It's not like they've been totally shut out the whole game. Now it's a matter of getting on the field, making the adjustments they need to make for, against this uh, Packer defense and marching it down the field. Here we go. First and 10. 3.57 left to play. The Rams are down by 7. Better. The reception up close to the first half. He needed to get to the 33. 
Clock continues to run. Well, right there, the Packers come with the four-man rush. They don't bring anybody in the blitz. So Chris Miller has time to complete it to Jerome Bettis. Now what they have to do, and you know that the Packers are not going to come with four men all the time, as they've shown this afternoon, they'll blitz you. So now when the Packers are showing the blitz, it's up to the offensive lineman, maybe Jerome Bettis picking up that blitz so they can get the ball downfield. Bettis a gain of nine. Where they said it was good enough for the first half. So lunging forward on the handoff is Jerome Bennis. Clock will get down to three minutes left. Tom, that's what makes the game of football so exciting to watch is the strategy, the adjustments that you have to make on the move. You don't get a whole lot of time to make those adjustments. You go up to the line of scrimmage, you might have two or three seconds where you have to bang, make a different call, change things, and that's what makes this a great game. Second down and six. Four wideouts in the game for the Rams. Miller throws, good enough for the first down. Reception made by Willie Anderson. The clock continues to run, 2.35 left. Reggie White complaining, going to the face. He's thinking maybe one of those offensive linemen have been hitting him in the face. And defensive linemen, a lot of times, you know, some of that happens, uh, you know, but a lot of times it's not on purpose. And, uh, you know, I would doubt very much that playing against a guy like Jackie Slater, he is attempting to go up to the face on purpose. So get off a play before the two-minute warning. Miller going long, has a man, and it's tipped away. He was trying for Willie Anderson, and on the coverage, number 22, Lenny McGill. You know, we talk about the matchup, Jackie Slater against Reggie White, and as an offensive lineman, you don't always have to stay up top, try to outmuscle your guy. Right here, he sets nice set. I think I'll just take him low. And that's a great change for offensive linemen because that defensive lineman is just worried about getting to the pass, the passer. And when you go down quick like that on his legs, it's hard for him to react. Nice change up by Jackie Slater. Second down and 10. The Rams trail by seven. Here comes the blitz. Making the reception on the near side is Todd Kinchin. And that'll take us to the two-minute warning. Two-minute warning. Two minutes. Leroy Butler on the tackle. So 1.59 left to go from Green Bay. The Packers in front by seven. Tom Brenneman, Anthony Munoz back at Lambeau Field. The Packers in front 24-17. The Rams have the football and they are on the move. That has been rare here in the second half. You see six punts, a total of three first downs here in the second half for the Rams. That is amazing to look at. Wow, I mean, three plays out, three plays out, and then five plays, 18 yards. Boy, this offense has not done a thing this second half. They have a chance to really redeem themselves on this drive here. Third down and four. Miller throws, complete first down and four. Flipper Anderson down to the 35. 150 left to go in the game. Well, I talked just a few minutes ago about making adjustments and making things work, and they're they're doing that right now. They're picking up the blitzes. Chris Miller is throwing the ball quickly, and as they're marching down the field, they're making those adjustments needed. Gain of 14 on the play. First and 10 at the 34. Flag comes down, early movement, and Miller just throws it away. Looked like the right side of the offensive line got started to beat too soon. I think maybe Jackie Slater took off Both just marks. a little too quick. Right of the snap, number 76 to the offense. Five yards, still first down. Well, 76, um, I'm not sure who they called that one on. Uh, they made a mistake. They just yeah. called the wrong number. Uh, 76, of course, is defensive and to Robert Young. It was indeed against 78, Jackie Slater. Well, maybe in your 19th year, they'll change up the numbers so no one knows who it is. <laughs> <laughs> he deserves that kind of respect. That's right. <laughs> Back him up five yards, first and 15. Miller, great protection. Flag comes down, and he throws down the field. It's incomplete. Good coverage made by George Key. Well, when a flag comes down around the quarterback, you figure holding and Reggie feeling he was the holding. one held. Number 78 of the offense, 10 yards, 
Well, when you have a matchup going out there like Reggie Penalty against accepted. Jackie, it's hard Penalty. to take your eyes Still away from it. Reggie White coming off the ball. Nice inside move right there. Jackie Slater grabs him by the face mask, holding on Jackie Slater. Excellent move by a big guy weighing 290, 295 pounds. Takes it to the inside, and they have enough speed to get in there, and it caused Jackie Slater some problems on that play. And the Rams are going the wrong way. Back-to-back -back penalties against Slater. First down at 25, the ball at midfield. Miller, downfield, trying to hit the big one. And the ball is caught. A flag comes down. Willie Anderson, the reception, inside the 10-yard line. And on the coverage, Lenny McGill. Boy, what that a was, hit that was. Sorry, Tom. That was an excellent throw and an excellent catch by, catch by Willie Anderson. Wow. Right here, you see Chris Miller going back. Excellent protection. Lays it up there for Willie Anderson to run under it. Right there, you see the left hand on the head of Willie Anderson. That's interference. Number 22 of the defense. Tony being forced into the spot of the foul. First down. Right there, you see the left hand on his head. Not a whole lot of contact, but he does have it on the head, head of Flipper Anderson. Anderson still makes the catch. Unbelievable. So they're pass saying, actually, that ball uh, popped loose from Flipper Anderson. And the pass interference Gets him down to the 10-yard line. Wow, what a turn of events. First and 25 a moment ago. Pass interference call now first and goal. Packers are leading by seven with a minute eight left to play. The reception is made by Jesse Hester inside the five, and they'll spot it just outside the two. Well, we look minute and four left the Rams down inside of the five they score a touchdown kick the extra point overtime or do you see Chuck Knox go for two and for the win let me turn the table and ask you that question well I'd make things exciting I'd give the guys an extra quarter to play I'd go for the extra point take it to overtime all right Wayne Gandy reports as a tight end here in the short or goal line situation Second down and goal. The pitch to Jerome Bennett. Looking for a hole. There's not one there. Flag comes down. A loss of three. Doug Evans coming up. Making the tackle along with James Willis. My guess would be that it's holding on Wayne Gandy who checked in at the tight end position. He kind of got hit and went back a little bit. And I think he uh, kind of dragged the defensive end down. Holding. Number 70 in the offense. 10 yards. Still second down. Well, you made the call there, Anthony Munoz. One minute left in the game. The Rams at halftime led 17 to three. The Packers have scored three times, three touchdowns here in the second half. Their offense couldn't do anything against the Rams defense in the first half. The Packers lead 24-17. A pass interference call a moment ago got the Rams down to the 10. It is second and goal from the 12. Miller throws across the middle through the hands of Jesse Hester. And another flag comes down on the play. And that might be another penalty against the Rams. Yes, it is. We have a false start. Right of the snap. Number 78. Whoa. Five yards. That Still is three, three penalties against the 19-year veteran Jackie Slater on this drive. Well, we talked about not waking up a guy. Reggie White, we mentioned, keep him asleep. Don't let him have an impact on the game. And here late in the game, those penalties just don't happen. You need someone on the other side of the ball creating someone to jump off sides, creating the holding penalties. And you have to give Reggie White a lot of credit for making this happen to Jackie Slater. Uh, two uh, terrific <laughs> veterans in Reggie White and Jackie Slater. They've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe all afternoon. Harris certainly... Uh, or rather, Slater, the upper hand in the first half, right here in the second. Second and goal from the 17. One minute left. Miller looking around. Throws to the end zone. Through the hands of Johnny Bailey. Tom, what they did on that play is they took Reggie White, moved him over. Leo Goas inside the right guard, and he got pressure. Chris Miller makes the throw, has Johnny Bailey open, but he can't complete the pass. Right here you see Chris Miller going back, 
You see Reggie White right there hits him initially in the arm, but Chris Miller recovers, makes the throw, and almost makes the completion. But Reggie White, raising havoc on the outside, all of a sudden comes to the inside, and that's where he's lined up right now over the right guard. Third and goal from the 17. Miller throws to the end zone, intercepted by Lenny McGill. And the celebration is on here in Green Bay. on that drive by the Rams. They got all the way down to the two-yard line and then ended up having to try and punch it in after two penalties backed up to the 17. No question about it. The mistakes killed this Ram offense. Right here you see Flipper Anderson going to the inside and the ball is thrown to the outside and Lenny McGill makes the interception, but you're right, Tom. Too many mistakes on this final drive. They had to have it. They were taking it down. All of a sudden they went backwards. Then they would start going forward. Just too many mistakes. Forty-seven seconds left in the game. They'll hand it off to Edgar Bennett. And he'll be tackled. The Rams immediately calling a timeout. Joe Kelly tripped him up. So 42 seconds left in the game. Miller and the Rams trailing the Packers by seven. Well, coming up on the NASDAQ stock market post-game report, James Brown and Terry Bradshaw will get you caught up on all the action and scores, along with the highlights from the sixth week of the NFL season. That's all coming up next on the NASDAQ stock market post-game report. 42 seconds left. Packers in front, 24-17. Bennett again on the carry, still on his feet. He's up close to a first down, and the Rams will burn another timeout. Second charge, timeout, Los Angeles, 40 seconds. The Rams have on. one left. Well, Chris Miller, the starter for the Rams, the first three games of the season, he was injured, a pinched nerve in his right shoulder, a slight separation. Chris Chandler took over, had a terrific game against Kansas City, was injured last week and ankle when taken down against Atlanta. Miller, the starter today, a brilliant first half, but the Ram offense has been thoroughly shut down here in the second half. Well, I talked about it in the pregame show or the pregame uh, open where maybe the quarterback position was unsettled. Chris Miller comes out, like you said, that first half and, and proves me wrong and uh, gets out there and does an excellent job. But again, you have to give that Packer defense excellent Adjustments at halftime coming out and just totally shutting down that Ram off in the second half. And Jerome Bettis will not reach five straight games of 100 yards or more rushing. His streak will end at four in a row. And still no runner has chalked up 100 yards in any game against the Packer defense this year. They hand it off on third and short. Needed to get just across the 30 for a first down. I'm not sure if Edgar Bennett made it or not. And then the Rams take their last timeout. This is what really becomes frustrating for a defense where you have a chance to just totally put it away. Get a first down, but now if they don't get the first down, they punt it away, and it gives the Rams a couple opportunities to throw the ball downfield. And as we saw in that Colorado-Washington game, it can happen in the last play of the game. And, you know, you hate to see that happening when you have a chance to just close it out, you know, seal the win and not get a first down and give the other team a couple shots at, you know, completing a freak long pass. Well, Reggie White, he might have to go back out there one more time. It's short. So now Hendrick will come out to punt. And if you're the Rams, do you send just about everybody to go get it? Well, you have to. You have to take a chance. And uh, you're going to get not great field position, but you should get pretty good field position. So take a chance and try to block the thing. If you block it, you might recover it, score, you recover it, and you're inside the 20-yard line. Waiting back is Johnny Bailey. 
30 seconds left to go here in the game. Henley and company getting ready to come after Hendrick. And a flag comes down. Be a false start against Green Bay. It looked as though there was a little bit of movement. False start. Prior to, prior to snap, number 29. Five yards, still fourth down. Well, one of the things you have a lot of defensive players doing nowadays is they get up there and they make a sudden movement like they're going to come across the line of scrimmage. And once they do that and the offensive player moves, it's a penalty. And, it, you know, you see more and more guys doing that, not only on the defense, but when someone's trying to punt or kick the ball away. So to back him up five yards. And Hendrick kicks it away. Short punt. Bailey at the 35. Plows ahead, he's out to, the ball comes loose, and the Rams recover. But very good field position. 21 seconds left. 24-17 Packers, and the Rams have the ball at their own 43. Well, with 20 seconds left and no timeouts remaining, you know they have to go with something along the sidelines so, because if they complete something way downfield, 20 seconds doesn't give you a whole lot of time, especially for those big guys to run up and get set. So look for something along the sidelines as they split two wide receivers out on each side outside of the numbers here. First and 10 at the 43. Miller out of the shotgun. Swing it outside, and the ball is dropped by Chris Brantley, the rookie out of Rutgers. And I don't understand why they run a crossing pattern by Chris Brantley. I mean, even if they do complete it, he's going to run out of bounds and not even get to the 50-yard line. That just doesn't make sense to me. 16 seconds left. Second down and 10. The Rams need a touchdown. They trail the Packers by seven. Miller. Feeling the pressure, rolls out. Pass is completed to Johnny Bailey. Out to the 45. 11 seconds now left. Good thing he got that ball away because the guy that was chasing him, number 92, Reggie White. You hate to get hit by him, and he does complete the pass. 11 seconds left. They still have you know, a couple plays left here. I'm surprised. Well, maybe now they'll go downfield. They're sitting there on the 45-yard line. They still have quite a ways. They have to score a touchdown. Miller brings the Rams to the line of scrimmage. Third down and eight. That nearly snapped over his head. White just throwing aside. And all of a sudden, White is there to take down Miller. Sean Jones able to strip the football loose. Or White stripping it loose. Jones recovers on the fumble. And that will seal it for Green Bay. You know, when Reggie White came over from the Eagles to the Packers, they were talking about, well, he's not the player that he used to be. The one thing they weren't talking about was how he was being double teamed all the time. But right here, you see him just toss Jackie Slater aside. And when you get Reggie White one-on-one -on -one with someone, more times than not, Reggie White's going to come out a winner as he did right there. But I think a lot of people lose sight that he is being double teamed quite a bit. Five down on the knee. That'll run it out. So the Green Bay Packers trailed 17-3 at halftime. Their defense shut down the Rams in the second half. And Brett Favre and the Green Bay offense came alive, sparked by that punt return touchdown of 85 yards from Robert Brooks. And the Packers even their record at 3-3 three three on the season with this 24-17 victory. Well, one of the things that impressed me about Brett Farr offensively for the Packers was his ability when he was blitz, when he did feel pressure, to stand back there and not have the happy feet, not to move around like he was uncomfortable being back there in the, yeah, uncomfortable back there in the pocket, but he sat back there, let the rush come to him, and he would dump it off. And he was, that's what gave him an excellent second half. Not an easy day for Jackie Slater. No, as you mentioned, he started out, played well at first, but the second half, things got uh, you know, pretty ugly here. They had two or three penalties in a row. Reggie White came alive and uh, made some big, big plays here in the second half. 
Well, you know, they talked about this matchup. You did Anthony Munoz before the game got underway, and I'm sure you remember uh, your infrequent toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe confrontations with White. You had many more with another great lineman in Bruce Smith. Well, you know, that's the thing about the NFL. You know going into a game, they're great athletes also. You know that you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. You try to keep the losses down to a minimum. But a lot of times, as, a def as an offensive lineman, you know when defensive players make a play, they have a lot more impact at times than, you know, when we make plays mm -hmm. as offensive linemen. And right here, it was obvious. You saw that with Reggie White making, you know, sacks and, and tackles. They just have a bigger impact uh, on the game compared to offensive linemen play. What does this game and this comeback do for the confidence of Brett Favre? It has to, to build it up tremendously, especially after last week starting out and finishing week. They started out strong last week, and they finished week. They lost the game. This week, they start off, they can't do a thing in the first half, and to come out in the second half against a really good Ram defense and to generate the offense that he did, that has to be a big confidence boost. And as we talked about earlier, Mike Holmgren saying, hey, this is the year where we determine what this young man's going to do. This doesn't hurt him at all. Barr finishes a day 25 of 41, 222 yards, a touchdown and interception. But when you take into account the poorest first half for Brett Favre, he really had a solid afternoon, and maybe he won a few fans that were enemies at halftime over the final 30 minutes. Also, we have to mention their special teams. Their special teams came through and ran one back for a touchdown also. The Miller Life player of the game is Brett Favre. Our final score here at Lambeau Field, the Rams. Ball to the Green Bay Packers, 24-17. Coming up, the NASDAQ stock market post-game report. James and Terry will get you up to date on all of today's action. That's all next on the NASDAQ stock market post-game report. <laughs>